adjust. One is for you, two is for me. Okay. And we'll get it figured out here. So if you're ready, I'll start here momentarily. Yeah, Are we all set? Ready. All right. I'm ready. Get my headset set. Good evening from the campus of Father Ryan High School, where tonight the Irish are set to take on the Innsworth Tigers. Hey everybody, Lou Pickney and from behind the crest, Owen Doherty with you here in this pregame. It's Father Ryan after three consecutive road games comes back to the friendly confines of South Nashville and Giacosa Stadium for a battle with the Tigers. Another great year, another great, this has become such a good game to watch throughout the years and it's going to be a good game, Lou. I'm looking forward to see how the Irish back uh, bounce back after our three straight uh, losses on the road, their first three road games, finally coming back home for homecoming. I think it should be a good one. Father Ryan started the season 2-1 and one with three consecutive home games. And then, as you noted, Owen, three straight losses on the road, including that absolute heartbreaker against JP2. It's a game on local TV going up against a, a telethon, so it was – you know, high viewing for the greater Nashville area, but not the outcome the Irish wanted, then the loss to NBA, and then finally last week's loss at Ravenwood. The one at Ravenwood was definitely a very a tough one, but, you know, I, n I never like to make excuses for teams, but I always like to point out there were some big factors, and they had a couple players out. It was on the road. It was raining. It was on a grass field. It's the first time they've had to play on a grass field all year. And you just have those type of things going on throughout a game. And sometimes that gets into your psyche. You come off two, you know, straight losses against potentially what is usually the biggest games of the year. And it's difficult. You're right. If there's a transition to playing on a grass field, plus it was rainy. The way the sky oh seemed to gosh. open at halftime. It opened that night. It didn't stop till t I mean, till midnight t yesterday. It, there's been a lot of rain. That's in large part because of what has transpired with the hurricane that caused so much damage in North Carolina and South Carolina. And they say it is at its height, it was the size of four of the state of Ohio, so it was huge. So luckily tonight, though, it appears that rain is not in the forecast. Slightly cooler than usual. Or I should say than usual than it has been. It's been unseasonably warm the last several weeks. Momentarily, going to do the national anthem, the 50-yard line. Haven't done the coin toss yet. Still, several minutes before game time. A lot of big things going on right now. Bishop Spalding just gave the opening blessing um, of the night. Now we're hearing a member from the Golden Grad class here. We're going to sing the national anthem. We're going to pause. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang glad the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still rendition of the national anthem it's always just so fantastic when you get to see all these alumni you know so many members throughout this 
I mean, that's what's so special um, about Father Iron High School is you literally, because of the whole parochial system through the Diocese of Nashville, you have people from all walks of life in this city coming together at such a special place. And it's just, it's always so beautiful to see. Father Ryan comes into this game 0-3 in Division II AAA play, so with only three games in region play remaining, certainly this is an important one for the Irish. Relevant scores of note, a couple of games already underway in Chattanooga. Brentwood Academy up 7 to nothing at Baylor. Baylor on the schedule later this year for Father Ryan, taking a trip down to Chattanooga. Also, JP2 trails Macaulay 7 to nothing. that also in the first. So those games underway, starting about the time ours will start, Brentwood High, the last non-region game this season for Father Ryan. They host the Irish one week from tonight. They'll be taking on Independence. Brentwood High 5-1, and one, by the way. And then White Station, 3-3, three and three, playing at 5-1 and one NBA. So that's the, uh, those are the games of particular note for Father Ryan fans. Yeah, you know, going back to, let's just go and start back with Brentwood Academy and Baylor. Baylor, like Father Ryan, uh, Baylor more recently coming into a downswing. Like, it's all programs go through. Every program has their ups and downs, highs and lows. It's all a big old cycle. Baylor has unfortunately, you know, unfortunate for them, has started the cycle. Father Ryan getting an advantage last year, the big win. Hopefully another one big this year. We look forward to covering that game. You know, from that game, I, I really wouldn't expect anything much, Lou. I think Brentwood Academy will, you know, do what they always do, what it seems like for, like, what, fifth year in a row now going for the national cha- – uh, for not national uh, – state championship is just – they win. Well, they've had a lot of success, that's for sure. They lost a lot of seniors from last year. And I know going into week two of the Father Ryan B.A. game, B.A. seemed to struggle at times against Hillsboro, but whatever issues they had in week one, they ironed out by week two, throttled the Irish, and they've throttled basically everybody else they faced since then. So – at least for Father Ryan, that, at least for the regular season in the past, as we have Ensworth on the left side getting ready to run through the banner that the Tigers have set up. Ensworth has dominated this series. They lead it 12-1. to one. Father Ryan's only win in the series was their very first meeting. That was in 2007. Also includes the 2011 playoff loss Father Ryan had at Ensworth. Father Ryan has never beaten Ensworth here at Giacosa Stadium. So we see the captains for both teams at midfield, as we'll do the coin toss. Father Ryan doesn't have the best um, home record in the world, um, to be honest. But I think with the coaching staff, we're in year three. Year four looks exciting to me already. I can't, already can't wait to be watching it from you know wherever I end up next year. But there's something in the water here at this place, and it's just another thing that makes this place so special, like I was talking about earlier. Yeah, and you have generations of families and a lot of tradition there's definitely something really cool that Father Ryan has to offer to families that want to buy in something, that want to, that, you know, members of this community all around Nashville, there's something here that people from everywhere can buy into. I agree with you on that. We just had the coin toss, and it appears Ensworth won the toss and deferred. Father Ryan's only won the opening toss twice this season. That was the opener, the 2018 season. And then last week against Ravenwood. Every time there's been a coin toss, no matter which side has won, there's been a deferral. So Father Ryan will receive the ball to start the game, and then Innsworth after halftime will receive to start the second half. It's nice to see our boys back in purple. This eye's about to get opened up, and this is going to be the best atmosphere all year. I anticipate that. Of course... Celebration, the Golden Class of 1969. They had the Pride in the Pit barbecue, which I was, I think, one of the first ones in there. Brought my appetite. Feasted on some of the delicious pork and chicken offerings. Speaking of delicious, you can see the <laughs> wonderful Innsworth Tiger uh, banner. They're magically delicious. I, uh, I think Coach Rector and them might have something to say about that here in a few moments. But well, The playoff, Tony the Tiger with frosted flakes. <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you on that. I guess the only so many. Yeah, Tony the Tiger betraying his own cereal brand and eating Lucky Charms. Hey, that's fine. We know what happened B.A. Volleyball. They put that banner up. Didn't go too well. Maybe we have the same outcome here tonight. So Ensworth tears through that banner. And their black helmets, white jerseys, and white pants with black numbers outlined in orange. 
Father Ryan tonight. They'll be taking the field momentarily. White helmets, purple jerseys, purple pants. And again, this is the second to last regular season home game of 2018 for Father Ryan football. It's the way the scheduling's worked out. And here come the Irish. Always a sight to behold. Father Ryan 2-4 in the season, 0-3 in Division II AAA play, but certainly would go a long way to turning things around if they can knock off the Tigers tonight. This is an Ensworth team that is very proficient at running the football. Their top two running backs each average in excess of six yards per carry. It's about what half Father Ryan has had this season. Irish have had a challenge at times stopping the run, and so that will definitely be one of the keys to the game. It's a very young linebacking core they've got out there. And the secondary has played very well, but the linebackers, they've struggled a little bit this year. But Coach uh, Coach Privet is a phenomenal defensive coordinator. I have full confidence that whatever game plan he has, has a good chance of working every time. A lot of youth with this Father Ryan team, both sides of the ball, but particularly at linebacker. And there have been some bright spots. at sophomore Dylan Timmons has 19 tackles thus far in the season, 14 solo. But it is Anthony Wright, outside linebacker, who leads this Father Ryan team in tackles with 27. He also has two sacks and five tackles for loss included in that. So both teams are on their respective sidelines. Marching band exits to the left. And we'll be ready for kickoff here momentarily. Imagine for Father Ryan, we'll have David Ward, number 88, and Parker Urban, number 39, back to return deep. It appears that's what Father Ryan is going to do. The kicker for Ensworth, similar to what Zach Wesnowski brings for Father Ryan, it's Fred Jackson, number 87, who's their punter and kicker, also handles kickoffs. Decent leg strength, but more often than not, he fails to reach the end zone for that automatic touchback, so the Irish should have opportunities in this game to have some kickoff returns. Slight delay as Ensworth gets it teed up. <coughs> so with Jackson having the ball teed to the 40-yard line. It's football time on Norwood Drive. Here we go. And it is a spinning intermediate length kickoff fielded at the 20 to the 25. Cuts to the near side spin move brought down around the 27 or 28-yard line. Lou, you were talking about earlier before the game when me and you were having our, you know, annual sit-down before the game. Ensworth's defense obviously has one weakness. Most people have a weakness, and there seems to be, like you and I were talking about, mobile, uh, an elusive mobile quarterback. And so I wonder, will we see a lot of Seamus O'Connell tonight? It'll be sophomore D.C. Tabscott after Michael Hartz on the kickoff return, setting up the Irish first and 10 from their own 28-yard line. Tabs got rolls to his left, throws left very high, incomplete. And David Ward got shoved in the back. The pattern was there, but uh, just throwing on the run on the first play, Tabs got not really in a rhythm yet, uh, just overthrew it. A little bit too much mustard on that one. 11.51 to go, first quarter, just underway here at Giacosa Stadium. Father Ryan playing host to Ensworth, second and 10 for Father Ryan. At the Irish 28-yard line out of the shotgun, Tabs got. It's going to hand it off for a run up the middle, maybe a couple of yards on that gain. Nothing really opened up there, the stinginess, that defensive line. And this is interesting. They start with a freshman in there at running back for the first carry, a Marion Ford. He'll pick up one yard, setting up third and nine. Father Ryan's going to spread out. Ensworth going four wide receivers, two on this tight side and two to the wide side on that far end. Tabscott tries to set the receiver screen complete. Seamus O'Connell past the 35, has the first down, past the 40, to the 45. Breaks the tackle, past midfield, and finally pushed out of bounds in Ensworth territory. So on 39, the receiver screen sets up Father Ryan first and 10 in Ensworth territory. 
Well, that was a good job by Sheamus for setting up a play, but really a bad job by the Father Ryan, other receivers, especially on the other side of the field. Sheamus only needed one or two blocks, and he would have had a lot of green grass in front of him, and the blocks weren't made, Lou. As it is, Sheamus made a few things happen himself, set the ball. By the time it's all said and done, he spotted at the Ensworth 47-yard line, first and 10 for the Irish, 11.05 to go first quarter. Tab Scott's going to hand it off again. It's a Marion Ford. Try and stretch it out toward this near side. He's going to lose a couple of yards. Quick penetration by the Ensworth defensive line. There's not much you can do there except just get down and don't lose any more yards. Dominic Wynn in there on the stop, number 11. One of the more proficient tacklers on this Tigers team, second and 12. Irish with the ball at the Ensworth 49-yard line, 10-39 to go first quarter. It'll be a three-receiver look with Noah Haley and as the H-back to block. Tab Scott spins, throws he deep. got a man. He's got Evan Rewers, and it's caught. A nice catch and throw. Rewers hauls it in. He's at the 19-yard line. And that's proof right there, yes, D.C. Tab Scott has had his struggles, but when you're being faced with that kind of rush and you're able to stand in there, make that accurate deep throw across the field, that shows real poise for such a young quarterback. Irish with the ball in the red zone. First and 10, 10.24 to go first quarter. Irish get quick to the line via handoff. That's Antonio Wright for about a three-yard gain. And that's all you need really each time, just three or four yards. The quick push off by the line got him a few. Interesting that the Irish started with Ford in there as opposed to Wright, who typically is the initial running back, but they worked him in on that last play. It's a three-yard pickup. Ten minutes to go first quarter, no score. Father Ryan, after receiving the opening kickoff from its own 20, and Hart's bringing it back. Offense has moved the ball to the Ensworth 16-yard line. It's a jet sweep on second and seven. Seamus O'Connell to the outside. Can't quite get the edge. And he'll be forced out of bounds. Looks like on the other side of the Ensworth 15-yard line. Not a lot of room to go there, but Seamus' ability to see the field and see the openings before they're really there got him the few yards he got. Yeah, O'Connell definitely has great field vision, that's for sure. Part of what makes him so successful and elusive. Noah Haley comes to the sideline. He'll be replaced by Parker Erdman, a receiver on this third and six. The Irish need to get the ball between the nine and ten yard line of Ensworth to get a first down. Rolling to his right, throws, complete. And made a pin on the spot. Parker Erdman on the reception from Tab Scott. Well, it looks like he got near the nine, and it looks like he got the eight, so I think they're going to give it to him, and yes, they will. I think you're right, Owen. Indeed, they're going to give the Irish. It'll be first and goal. Big play by such a young player, the freshman. So that'll set up the Irish first and goal from the Ensworth eight-yard line. Ensworth is a team that has struggled to, to rally when they've been down. It'll be a handoff, Antonio Wright but not much space there. Sometimes there's just not the gap there. It wasn't there this time. Malloy on the stop for Ensworth. Jude Malloy, a six-foot-tall, 173-pound junior. Second in goal now for the And this is something I heard about David Russell coming in. I think I've heard some talk around the school about him coming to play halfback. He's in the yes, game. He's in there now. He was actually in last week. I had looked down when he went to the game. Missed the call on that, but he's in there now in this big set. Here we go, David Russell, a defensive lineman, so tough to bring down. Bringing the thunder, finally tackled around the three-yard line after breaking a couple of would-be Innsworth defenders. I say give it to him again right up in the middle. Let's name it David over the top right here. Of course, the challenge for Father Ryan, if you use David Russell too much on offense, might wear him out a bit for what they ask him to do on that defensive line. 8.34 to go first quarter. Father Ryan with the ball at the Ensworth four-yard line on this third and goal. D.C. Tab Scott. They will send Ward in motion, and it's going to be a handoff. About a one-yard loss. Well, sometimes when you're going out on the five and you do that package, there's a lot of room for Ensworth to cheat up and to know where the ball is going. There's only so many places you can run the ball. It looks like Father Ryan's going to go for a field goal here. So we hit the eight-minute mark of the first quarter with no score. Zach Wesnowski, if he can hit this, we'll give Father Ryan an early 3 to nothing lead. 
going to be Seamus O'Connell holding. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up. It'll spin through the uprights. No, it won't. No good. Well, that was not what I expected there. It looked like it went through, but at an angle, sometimes it can be misleading. So Father Ryan, after the long drive, ends up with nothing. And it's going to be Ensworth's ball first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. I hate to talk bad about such a young, talented player, but when you've played as many games as Zach Wisnowski has and something, maybe the snap wasn't right. You know, it's hard to see from up here. But when you're right there of what should basically be an extra point in this situation where you absolutely need points to start off this game to get some momentum and carry it through the first quarter, that's just a killer. You can't have those types of things happen. Wisnowski, it's a high enough kick. It just didn't get between the uprights. It went to the left of that far upright. So here comes Innsworth, its first offensive possession of the game. They go with a double tight end set. That's going to set up the run to the near side. It's got a first down and then some Father Ryan having some trouble making a tackle. Inside the 20 to the 10, makes a cut. One play in an 80-yard touchdown run for Innsworth. And that's, Keyshawn Lawrence. And that's exactly why those three points are important right there. Because Ensworth and their running ability can flip a switch, and you just saw it. So Keyshawn Lawrence, the 6'2", 184-pound junior, on Ensworth's first offensive play from scrimmage goes 80 yards. So instead of Father Ryan taking a 3 to nothing lead, it's Ensworth running 80 yards and going up 6 to nothing with Fred Jackson set to attempt an extra point. A little trouble with the snap. It's a line drive kick, but it went through. 7.21 to go, first quarter. Your score ends worth 7, Father Ryan 0. We'll be right back here on ATW SportsCast. Seven twenty-one to go first quarter, and it's Ensworth striking first after Father Ryan misses a chip shot field goal opportunity. First play from scrimmage. It's a handoff and an 80-yard touchdown run for Keyshawn Lawrence. And that just has got to hurt. You drive so far down the field. You miss what's almost basically an extra point of a field goal. And on first play from scrimmage, you give up such a big play where it looks like no one even went to tackle. That it's was just an absolute... Drive. It's just an absolute killer to your team this early in a game. That was the third rushing touchdown this season for Lawrence. He only had 186 yards rushing coming into the game. He tacked on 80 in one play. And so now Ensworth's going to line up as if they may try and pooch kick it from the 40. This is Hayden Horn, the backup kicker. It's a skying kick toward the far sideline. That's a live uh, ball. That's dangerous if it stays in bounds. It goes out of bounds. Father Ryan's going to get the ball at its own 35-yard line, but it almost looks like something Father Ryan would do against an opponent, kick it into a weird spot and see if your guys can outrun him to it. Well, yeah, the thing is, it's funny that you say that Father Ryan does it all the time. They weren't prepared for that at all. It didn't even look like anyone was going to go for that ball. They are lucky it went out of bounds on the spin that it was going on. Yeah, Horn's just a sophomore. He's not their regular kicker. No, that's Jackson. So here comes Father Ryan, trailing 7 to nothing, 7.15 to go first quarter. After a long, methodical drive, had Father Ryan looking at first and goal, and a missed field goal. I look for a big shot coming off for D.C. Tapscott's arm right here. It's a three-receiver look forward to the running back. The freshman to the right. Tapscott rolls to his right, tries to buy time. He's going to let it fall incomplete. Intended for Seamus O'Connell on the near side. Good coverage, though, by Ensworth. Nobody was open second down. I uh, admire DC's, you know, want and urge to try to make a big play happen, but, you know, and try to make that play happen. I know that's what he was going for, but Seamus has great hands, but sometimes in that coverage, when it's covered so well, it's great that that ball was inaccurate because that could have been going six the other way. Second and ten for Father Ryan from the Irish 35-yard line. It's going to be a handoff to Ford. And just not a lot of room there for him. 
maybe two yards, if that. So it's a Marion Ford, the freshman, 5'5", 163. So he picked up three yards on the play. Third down and seven from the Irish 38-yard line. 6.46 to go first quarter. Endsworth up seven to nothing. Antonio Wright came back in the game. Look for a shot over the middle. Well, here comes Parker Erdman late. Irish have to be careful here with 15 seconds on the play clock. Father Ryan's going to have to burn a timeout here. This is not what the Irish wanted. They had Noah Haley out there. He's normally in for blocking purposes on running play situations on third and seven he was out there Irish tried to send in Erdman and in the confusion Father Ryan took its first well, time they, out they have a little bit of st uh, shifting going around on the offense of one of the key senior offensive linemen Felix Wilson out with a concussion in this game and that's a, a difficult thing to say the very least Felix Wilson typically the right guard right offensive guard for this Irish team and against uh, a defensive front for Ensworth it's got some big bodies in there Got Tyler Barron at 6'5", 250. Sam Krupp, number 77, 6'2", 286. Edward, 6'2", 289. I mean, these are some large students in there. And so if you don't have your starters in on offensive line, and I'm glad for the concussion protocol, obviously that's the most important thing, but by the same token, it's tough enough to try and run against this Innsworth defense. With your starters. Precisely. And that I've seen from one game after another after another this season. Third and seven for Father Ryan. 6.31 to go first quarter. And the Irish trailing the Tigers 7 to nothing. But a long count. Tab Scott throws to the far side incomplete intended for David Ward. He was open, but no blocking for D.C. And he threw that off his back foot. And he got hammered. That's the challenge of playing quarterback, knowing you're going to take a hit either way and you try and get it there best you can. Got rid of the ball at least, but falls incomplete. Ward was open, but as you noted, not quite enough time for Tab Scott to be set and make the throw. So Zach Wesnowski on fourth and seven. He's going to punt the ball away. Only one returner back for Ensworth. Sometimes they'll keep two guys back there. They had a lot of success last week against Trezevant on the kick return. It's a spinning kick from Wesnowski. It's going to balance, take an Irish roll inside the Ensworth 30. It's going to roll close to the 25-yard line and to the Ensworth side of the 25-yard line, and that's where the Irish will pick it up and blow it dead. So a good punt there by Wisnowski, no return. And Ensworth now looking at first and 10 from its own 25-yard line. I don't. I expect a just a quick, quick run out to the outside on the right side to the far side of your screens, and hopefully Father Ryan will be there this time to stop him. 6-10 to go first quarter. Innsworth 7, Father Ryan 0. Cole Kennan, the quarterback, with a three-receiver look on this first down. Fakes the handoff. He's going to throw deep. It's man coverage. And the pass is batted away. Good job defensively for Father Ryan as it falls incomplete. Good job. Irish defense, hands up. It's important that they, you know, weren't exactly showing as James Reed out there. Good, smart play by getting his hands up, recognizing that way, you know, you can't call the flag for holding or pass interference when there's no touching or anything going on. So smart heads up play by such a young player. So James Reed, the third, the freshman in there. Second and 10 for Ensworth. Ball thrown 25 yard line. Kennan will roll with it. He can run. He has a threat to try and run with the ball. He's tripped up and finally falls after about a three yard gain. Just a half second too late on that tackle. Got him by the shoestring. Luckily, didn't get any more. Almost had a sack for him. Anthony Wright will be credited with the tackle. Say a two-yard gain or a three-yard gain. Third and seven ball at the Innsworth 28-yard line. They need to reach the, their own 35 to get a fresh set of downs. Third and long is where Innsworth has struggled this season. I don't think that it's Kennan. He's just going to run it himself. Trying to get up the middle. Well, actually, it appears that they put in Turrentine, if I saw that right, and a Wildcat run, indeed. This is going to be close. I think they'll give it to him. Spot. That looked like a little bit of a generous spot after the roll, if you ask me, Lou. So we'll say it's at the 45, perhaps a generous spot, but whatever the case, it's a fresh set of downs. 
So Andre Turrentine, the sophomore, only plays receiver, but they'll use him in a lot of different spots. Stepped in on that one play for Kennan. Ran with it. Got to where he needed to reach to give Innsworth a fresh set of downs. 5-15 first quarter. Innsworth 7, Father Ryan 0. So on this first and 10, Cole Kennan out of the shotgun. Keeping it himself. Or did he hand it off? It's tough to tell this far away from the field on that far side, but it's a long run for Innsworth. Yes, they had the end around option going, the, you know, the Statue of Liberty option almost. He gave it to the man inside, took off, deceived the Father Ryan defense that time. Michael Hart's on the tackle for Father Ryan. First and 10 for the Tigers to the Irish 44. 4.49 to go first quarter, and Innsworth with a 7 to nothing lead. And it's some more trickery from the Wildcat spot, but David Russell may have ripped the ball away. The ball came loose as they tried Turrentine on the keeper. And that's why that young man has a scholarship to Austin P coming in last week. Because he can make plays like that that quick. He's just so quick to the ball if you give him the chance. Once he gets there, he almost never relinquishes his hold. So it'll be a seven-yard loss. Apparently did not lose the ball, but nice job by Father Ryan sniffing that one out. They're going to go under center, Will Ensworth on this second and 17. Kennan's going to keep it himself rolling to the far side. Throw, and it's a completion. Dante Wynn with a catch. But there's a flag on the play, so hang on. It's a procedure penalty against Innsworth, so this is going to come back. Second and 17 will become second and 22 for the Tigers. 3.55 to go first quarter. Innsworth 7, Father Ryan 0. Yeah, Father Ryan was playing man coverage right there. And on that play action, getting that man coverage, he was down on the down and out to the top of your screen there. He just opened. Beat your man on that step. Cole Kennan is the threat to run with the ball. He's a rather accurate passer as well. 58% completion rate right on the season, but on this play, it's second and 22 for Innsworth from their own 44-yard line. Another play fake, Kennan. He's looking deep. It's a comeback route, complete. Pick up about 12 yards. Still well shy of the yardage needed to get a first down. And that's another good play call by Innsworth, recognizing the one-on-one. -on -one. They had man coverage on the outside in those comeback routes. The slants, the comebacks, the down and outs, they work very well against man coverage against and you just have quicker receivers. I didn't quite see who made the catch on that far side. Look, it may have been Gabriel McDaniel. He's exited the game. It's going to be a three-receiver look for Ensworth on this third and nine. 3.04 to go first quarter. Irish could use a stop here. This could be four-down territory for Ensworth, though. As Kennan, they're going to set up a screen, a throwback to Turrentine, but Father Ryan's figured that one out. It'll be a tackle for loss. Who else? David Russell. And now it's not four-down territory. So what a good job by David Russell, sniffing it out fast. Interesting take on the screen pass. Clearly, Ensworth values what Andre Turrentine can do, but Father Ryan, after seeing what Turrentine was able to do, running from the Wildcat, keyed on him, and it paid off. So it'll be Jackson to punt, and Parker Erdman set to return for Father Ryan, standing at his own 15-yard line. Off the one hop, some problems with the snap, but Jackson gets it, punts it away. Erdman will... Back away from it. Takes a almost an Irish bounce before Ensworth finally stops it at the Father Ryan 25-yard line. So think about for Father Ryan, give up that first play from scrimmage touchdown for Ensworth, but since then able to calm things down a little bit. And it'll be Father Ryan coming up now with its third offensive possession of the game. 7-0 Ensworth, 2-13 to go first quarter. If you look to the bottom right of your screens right now, you can see Coach Privet. He is fired up with the defense coming in big on the clutch. Ensworth definitely looked like they had some momentum on offense. Good job, Irish defense. Good three, job. Three receivers on first and ten. It's going to be a handoff. Antonio Wright. And they'll have a two- or three-yard gain. Father Ryan sticking with the run. So a three-yard game will make it second and seven. 155 to go first quarter. Ensworth leads seven to nothing. And with 26 seconds on the play clock, Irish are setting up a bit of a, a gimmick setup here on this side. 
Four receivers to this near side. This could be a double pass. It's to Sheamus. Is Sheamus going to throw it deep? He's under pressure. Throws back. And it's complete to D.C. Tabscott. Tabscott to the 35. He has the first down. Goes out of bounds at the Irish 40-yard line. That's the fastest I've seen D.C. Tabscott ever run. And you just got a score update there, Owen. Was it about B.A. and Baylor? Our buddy Dean Johnson down there braving, braving the storm. B.A. is currently up on Baylor 15-0 at the end of the first quarter down there. We're going to keep you updated on that game and all the other games going on in the region. Hang on, there's a flag. Personal foul against Ravenwood. Oh, excuse me, against Ensworth. But one week off on that. Ravenwood had several last week. I was watching that film earlier. So it's a personal foul penalty against Ensworth. So as if it weren't enough for Ensworth to give a first down pass to D.C. Tabscott, you can add 15 yards to that. Now you've got good field position. I think we'll see it again. I think we'll see Coach Tavo take another shot. It's entirely possible with a three-receiver look. Irish get quick to the line as they like to do after a first down. Sets a handoff, a spin move, and it'll be no gain on the run. Antonio Wright tried to spin his way out of that one, like you said, Lou, but defensive line of Ensworth was just ready for it. They will say Josh Howard. He is the leading tackler for this Ensworth team. Dangerous senior. When Ensworth lost to CPA early in the season, they were without their two senior inside linebackers. They've had more success, as you would imagine, with them back in the lineup. Second and nine, less than a minute to go in this first quarter. Father Ryan with the ball at the Ensworth 45. It's a play fake. Tapscott throws high, and it's incomplete intended for Evan Ruers. That's the second time we've seen Tapscott overthrow a guy based on just height. Ruers was there and able to make a play just a little too much. They list Ruers at 6-2, but there's a lot of mustard on that ball. Tabscott's got a very strong arm. So third and nine now, Father Ryan. 40 seconds to go in this first quarter. And the Irish down 7 to nothing, But going with a four-receiver look with Tabscott standing right at the 50-yard line. Ensworth only brings four, and it's going to be a sack. It's poor execution here by Father Ryan. You know, a couple, you know, run, nothing was there. Pass overthrown and nothing really going for D.C. It was a Tyler Barron on the stop, the 6'5", 250-pound defensive lineman. One of the more talented players, certainly size-wise, from this Ensworth team. And with four seconds to go in this quarter, the Irish are content to let the clock hit zero. So we've reached the end of the first quarter here at Giacosa Stadium. Your score, Ensworth 7, Father Ryan 0. We'll be right back here on ATW SportsCast. We begin the second quarter here at Giacosa Stadium. Hey, everybody. Lou Pickney along with from behind the crest, Owen Doherty, with you on the call of this Division II AAA East Middle Region football game between Father Ryan and Ensworth. Ensworth on its first offensive play from scrimmage after Father Ryan missed what would have been a chip shot field goal in its first possession. One play, 80 yard touchdown run by Lawrence. But now Father Ryan with the ball at the Ends worth 49-yard line. Either they're going to go for it or this can be a surprise punt. And indeed, a surprise punt from Seamus O'Connell. It's going to bounce at the inside the 15. It's going to keep rolling. They're going to try and field it with Ensworth. That was a poor decision. No harm, no foul, I suppose, as turn time is able to bring it in. But Father Ryan has pinned Ensworth back inside its own five-yard line. So 11.50 to go, second quarter. Ensworth leads 7 to nothing, but... The nose of the ball right at the five-yard line, and that's where they'll begin their next offensive possession of this game. 
Father Ryan, one week from tonight, plays at Brentwood High, taking on the 5-1 and one Bruins. The following week, it's a bye week for Father Ryan. And then a pair of Chattanooga opponents to end the regular season. So first and 10, Ensworth from the 5. Cole Kinnon, the quarterback, standing right at the goal line. This will be a handoff to Lawrence. He tries to kick it to the outside. Father Ryan's right there. They'll be stopped for about a five-yard gain. Credit Anthony Wright on the tackle from the outside linebacker position. Of course, Keyshawn Lawrence with that 80-yard touchdown, the lone score thus far in this one. Ends worth up 7 to nothing early in the second quarter. Dylan Timmons and Jackson Brown, the inside linebackers for Father Ryan on this second end. They'll say second and five from the 10. Be another handoff to Lawrence. He tries again to come to the near side. Hunter Hopkins spins him around. He'll go out of bounds for no gain. A flag comes in late. So we'll have to wait and see what that was. It's a holding penalty against Ensworth. So Father Ryan has a choice to make here. Do you force Ensworth back half the distance to its own goal? Or do you take the no gain on second down and go for third and five? Not the easiest choice to make necessarily. Appears there's some discussion going on amongst the with the referee and the coaching staff. Father Ryan will accept the penalty, it appears. So half the distance to the goal, replay second down the ball once again. Inside the five-yard line of Ensworth, actually spotted at the four. 11.02 to go, second quarter, Ensworth seven, Father Ryan zero. So on second and, say, second and 11, send a man in motion to the far side. Kennan's going to throw over the middle. It's a high throw, complete. A very nice catch made on that one by Jude Malloy. And the defense was there for Father Ryan. Hunter Hopkins was there. It was just a very good throw and an excellent bit of concentration by Malloy to bring that one in. But hang on. It's a procedure penalty against Ensworth. So take the pass off the board. No first down on that one. It'll be another half the distance to the goal for Ensworth. So Ensworth making some mistakes and the Irish, the beneficiaries of that. Ends with the ball now inside its own three-yard, or actually it's two-yard line now that I can see on this near hash. So second and long for Endsworth. The shadow of its own goal line. 10.38 to go second quarter. Father Ryan trailing Endsworth 7 to nothing. Only 12 seconds on the play clock. And Endsworth, as they usually do, will go the double tight end set. Actually, they'll spread it out with a three-receiver look here. It's going to be a handoff, trying to spin move, but Father Ryan's there to deny Gabriel McDaniel. McDaniel, a 5'10", 155-pound junior. He'll say a short gain, maybe a half yard, if that. So third and long, third and 12, as we pass 10 minutes to go second quarter. Ends worth up 7 to nothing, but the Tigers looking at third and 12 from deep in their own territory. It'll be three receivers, two to the near side, on this tight side. And they'll send Turrentine in motion toward the far side. Kennan, quick throw, complete at the 15-yard line. That'll be for a first down. Austin Henderson on the reception. Big target at 6'5", 210. And it was William Edmondson making the stop for the Irish. Nine twenty-five to go, second quarter. Ensworth seven, Father Ryan zero. After a rather strong conversion there by Ensworth, they're looking at first and ten from their own eighteen-yard line. It'll be Wynn and Malloy, the receivers to the far side, and now they go with a double tight end look. And it's going to be a handoff, about a five-yard gain. Edmondson on the stop. Indeed, it was. Gabriel McDaniel again on the carry. Bryce Edmondson is not active today for Ensworth. He's had some carries for them. 
Six-yard gain sets up second and four. 8.42 to go, second quarter. Innsworth seven, Father Ryan zero. And the Tigers with two receivers are going to set up this receiver screen pass. I'm not sure if it's a completion, if it would know they'll fall incomplete. You can tell they were setting that one up all the way. Isaiah Horton, very talented freshman, 6'2", 170 pounds. Couldn't quite bring it in. It was a bit of a low throw, and even if he had, Father Ryan was right there to stop any forward progress. So the ball spotted at the Ensworth 24-yard line. Third and four, 8.28 to go, second quarter. It's a three-receiver look. Turn time in motion to the far side. Fake the handoff. Be a throw. If it's a catch, it really is immaterial aside from the clock. The clock. It was a catch, but no gain. It's down immediately. It was Isaiah Horton on the reception. But that sets up fourth down in a likely punting situation here for Ensworth. 8.20 to go. Second quarter. Ensworth leads Father Ryan 7 to nothing with the Irish prepare to get the ball back. And Parker Erdman is set to return. Fred Jackson lining up to punt. It's a spinning kick off the one bounce. Erdman will field it from the Father Ryan 40. Tries to bring it back. About a two-yard gain off his effort. And Parker Erdman got wrapped up pretty heavily, Lou. Did it got pulled back. It looks to be okay. Just a little bit awkward looking on the tackle. Score update, scores of interest, 14-0 independence over Brentwood. Wow. Here at in, down in Williamson County and Chattanooga uh, in the third quarter, 20-3, McCauley over JP2. And at the half down in Chattanooga, Brentwood Academy up 15-7 over Baylor. First and 10, Father Ryan throwing. D.C. Tabscott trying to connect with Seamus O'Connell on the near side, but... Too much air under that throw. It'll be second and 10 for the Irish from their own 42. No update from West End Avenue. NBA taking on White Station. When we get that score, we'll be reporting it. White Station at 3-3 three and three on the year against a very talented 5-1 and one NBA team. So on second and 10, it's three receivers for Father Ryan, two to the far side. Tab Scott is going to hand it off. Antonio Wright tries to cut back toward the far side, trying to see his way through, and maybe a two-yard gain. Some late... A little bit of pushing and shoving by both sides. I appreciate the effort by Antonio. That's a, such always a good thing to see a player never really giving up on the play. But hopefully he doesn't give up yards trying to bounce out or something like that. Sometimes you just got to know to put the ball down, run the next play. Antonio Wright had some words with big number 59, Javon Edwards, 6'2", 289. A little bit of a size difference there. Third and nine for the Irish. We have a timeout. For Father Ryan, as the Irish will talk things over, the ball at the Father Ryan 43-yard line. And no one is worth noting here. This has been a defensive battle thus far, and aside from the 180-yard touchdown that Ensworth had on its first offensive play from scrimmage, it's been a back-and-forth fight. Well, I imagine after that 80-yard play was given up, Coach Privet put those boys, told them the game plan, reaffirmed them what their job is, and from what he probably told them, they've done their job. Well, the Irish have been able to bottle up the running attack, and that, I think, was one of the keys to the game for Father Ryan, aside from that first touchdown, of course. And I've been a bit surprised to see Ensworth come out throwing so much. Cole Kennan is a decent quarterback, but just knowing how they've had success running the ball and, in turn, Father Ryan's had its struggles, it's not quite what I expected. But Kennan is an accurate thrower. I mean, we saw a couple of those tosses over the middle, particularly. He was on target. This is a good timeout call by Coach Rector. This is a big third down. Your defense just got a big break. Got to keep them off the field. Four receivers, three to the far side for the Irish, third and nine. 7-10 to go second quarter. Ensworth brings some heat. The throw intended for Seamus O'Connell, who had slipped on this near side. That'll be fourth down now for Father Ryan. Fourth and nine from the Irish, 43-yard line, 7-0-4 to go second quarter. Father Ryan trails 7 to nothing. Dante Wynn was in coverage for Ensworth. Even if Seamus did a trip, that was still going to be a tight catch. Getting very close to the boundary over there would have been a tough catch. So Ensworth 
have Keyshawn Lawrence set to return. Had three different names listed for punt returners, so they bring in a fourth. Lawrence with a lone touchdown thus far for either team. It's a fake. Father Ryan's going to give it. Oh, it's not going to work for the Irish. They give it to Antonio Wright. Trying to fake it. They needed to reach the Innsworth 48 to get a first down instead. It's going to be a tackle for about a one-yard gain and a turnover on downs. I, I kind of like the play call. You're in the middle of the field, but you're still in your own territory. It's fourth and long. Ensworth probably doesn't think you're going to it, but it was just a good job for Ensworth going after the kicker. They immediately recognized what was happening, and they made a play. So Ensworth, the beneficiary of Father Ryan's trick play, not turning out the way the Irish wanted. Ensworth starts at the Father Ryan 44-yard line, first and 10, 6.58 to go. Second quarter, Ensworth leads Father Ryan 7 to nothing. Kinnon on first down is going to hand it off to Lawrence. Keyshawn Lawrence will be brought down. Maybe a loss, but a half-yard loss it looks like. Belly-to-back suplex. Amari Chapman bringing him down. Now they'll say actually Lawrence got back to the line of scrimmage, so no gain. Second and 10. 6.40 to go second quarter. Amari Chapman. Now that's a young player. A lot of people that are watching tonight should look forward to. He's so talented. Only a sophomore. They list him at 6'1", 225. Second and 10 now from the Father Ryan 44-yard line. Kenan's going to bring Turrentine in motion. And that's going to set up a handoff to Lawrence up the middle. Tried to break through. Looks like Timmons got a hold of him. Maybe a couple of other players in there as well. That was good catch defense right there. They figured they were going to give it to him again. They did. And the linebackers were there to catch him. That's an important thing for Father Ryan, stopping those runs between the tackles as we see Turrentine hit the sideline. Ditto for Malloy. When any of those Ensworth backs get through the linebacking core, which they can because they are all so quick, and they're just all so hard runners, once you get past the linebacking core, it's hard to tackle those guys. Look out for number nine in the game, Tyler Barron. They'll use him for double tight end sets. He is a threat to receive the ball. It's going to be a handoff to Lawrence running up the middle, and the Irish get the stop. Good defense, holding in strong against a big Heavy Ensworth set they held in there. They found the gaps, made the play. It was really third and six. It was a three-yard gain for Ensworth, making it fourth and three at the Father Ryan 37-yard line, 5-18 and counting, second quarter. Ensworth seven, Father Ryan zero, and it looks like the Tigers are going to at least line up to go for it. This is four-down territory for Ensworth because this is kind of a stalemate besides the first play. No one's really has done anything. They went for it in this type of situation against Knox Webb earlier this season. So Kennan under center. Behind it to Lawrence, who trips. The turf monster got him, and it's a turnover on downs. I give credit for Ensworth for making that call. You got, like, Ensworth, both of their starting running backs, average six yards of carry, like we were talking about earlier. And you're on third, third and three. I mean, fourth and three. Why not go for it in, your, uh, in Father Ryan territory? But unfortunately, like you said, the turf monster swallowed him up. So Keyshawn Lawrence... Unable to convert for Ensworth, and here comes Father Ryan's offense back into the field. 4.52 to go, second quarter. Ensworth 7, Father Ryan 0. And what has been a good back-and-forth battle thus far here at Giacosa Stadium. Let's see if there's a spark. Handoff run to the near side. Antonio Wright will be pushed out of bounds for maybe a one-yard loss. Perhaps getting back to the line of scrimmage at best. No real success for Antonio here tonight. On the stop, Tyler Barron coming in from that defensive end position, just like Father Ryan runs a 3-4 defense. That's what Ensworth has as well. I'll say, I guess, a half-yard gain, second and a short 10. 4.43 to go, second quarter. They set the receiver screen. Seamus O'Connell is complete. Seamus cutting it back toward the far side, past the 45-yard line. It worked have- earlier for him. They didn't get the first down there. Seamus is a deer, man. He can get downfield so quickly, and he's so elusive. So a seven-yard gain on the quick pass and run from Sheamus, saving the throw from the sophomore Tab Scott. Third and three for Father Ryan. 4.15 to go, second quarter. Ensworth leads seven to nothing, but the Irish looking at a third and three from their own 48. With two receivers, a big set there for Father Ryan. Be a run up the middle. It appears about a yard shy, depending on second effort. There's Antonio well, Wright on the carry. They, he barely got back to the line of scrimmage. It looked because of where the pile was that he was going to be close, but he, he it looks like he just got a little tripped up 
behind his line. Well, here we go. Father Ryan quick to the line. This is fourth and short. They may try and get Ensworth to jump offside. Irish only one timeout remaining. But 20 seconds on the play clock. They'll send Antonio Wright. The, is they're going to now have Tapscott go into center. It's going to try and Ensworth. They're, they're, they're trying to get Ensworth to jump is what they're doing. They're, they're not, they're not going to jump. Every time Father Ryan has sent a man in motion on fourth down, you know, he just it never really goes for it. And especially, you know, D.C. doesn't have the most commanding voice. He's a very young quarterback. He just doesn't have that commanding voice that gets defenses to jump. He doesn't have that, you know, that, like that Aaron Rodgers tone really gets into your head. Father Ryan, with only one timeout remaining, opts to take the five-yard penalty for delay of game. But you're right, though. That may be something teams have picked up on, Owen, as far as having the man in motion on that fourth down. Yeah. The idea being you're just trying to distract that defense, well, going to be thinking of a lot of different things. Father Ryan never goes five wide. They never do. There's always an H-back or a halfback. Someone there is there to help DC that extra blocker. So whenever they send that man in motion, and I'm not trying to like help out the other team, but they just never go for it. And it's just, it's just how it is. Speaking of going for it, now this could be a Seamus O'Connell punt. We've already seen that before. It's so on fourth well, and seven. We'll yeah, he takes a step back. Here we go. Indeed, we'll punt it. A nice spinning punt. Bounces to the 25, takes a nice Irish roll inside the 15, going for this near sideline. It'll go out of bounds at the Innsworth 12-yard line. So nice execution there. And Father Ryan will pin Innsworth at his own 12-yard line for its next offensive series. 3.06 to go second quarter. Innsworth 7, Father Ryan 0. And again, the early touchdown run, the 80-yard scamper by Keyshawn Lawrence. The lone touchdown thus far for either team. Innsworth will receive the ball to start the second half as they won the opening coin toss and deferred. Innsworth with all three of its timeouts and three minutes and seven seconds to work with here late in this second quarter. Be a longer halftime than normal with it being homecoming night here at Father Ryan. Three receivers on this first and ten for Ensworth. Kenan's going to hand it off to Lawrence. Lawrence trying to go toward that near side. Double flags come in. So a holding call against Ensworth. And that's going to be a half the distance to the goal line penalty if it, I presume, would be ex accepted by Father Ryan. It looks like it will. I think Edmonds had to come over to make the tackle on that near sideline, but play is wiped out as Father Ryan accepts the penalty. Ends with a lot of self-inflicted wounds as far as mistakes made. 2.58 to go second quarter. And despite those mistakes, Ensworth leads 7 to nothing. Irish could use a forced turnover here on this first and 16 from the Ensworth 6. Kennan from his end zone throwing a high pass. It was a wise play. It looked like it could have worked, but the throw a little bit off and will fall incomplete. Intended for Jude Malloy and Hunter Hopkins was there in coverage. Like the pass drifted a bit toward that far side away from where Malloy was. Second and 16, 2.52 to go in this second quarter. Ensworth 7, Father Ryan 0. And Ensworth with the ball at his own 6-yard line. And second and 16 upcoming. And again, it's a three-receiver look. Two to the far side. Kennan goes under center. This is probably a run when they do that. It's typically what it is. Not much of a game there. Now they got third down long. I imagine they're just going to drain the clock. Both these teams want to get into the extra long, extra long halftime we have coming up. Replan. Make the adjustments they need. And then they'll come out swinging again. I don't think either team's really good. You know, Father Ryan, depending on when they get the ball back, might take a shot or two. Um, depending on field position. I believe that was Tulio Malone. I was trying to double check. Couldn't really see his number the way he was standing. Averaging 6.8 yards per carry, but only a mild gain. Third and 14, 2.13 to go second quarter. Ensworth's going to throw into coverage, and it will fall incomplete. Father Ryan putting some trust in its freshman cornerback, James Reed. The intended receiver is the 6'5", Austin Henderson, but it's an incompletion. And at the 2.07 mark of the second quarter, Ensworth's going to have to punt from deep in its own territory. 
Jackson standing on the letter I in Irish, the first I. Near the back of that end zone. Bit below snap. High skying punt. Erdman is there. Fair catch called for and made at the Endsworth 48 yard line. So Erdman doing the smart thing there, bringing it in with a fair catch. And this will be Father Ryan's best starting field position thus far tonight. Well, now what you have here is you're going to see some conservative play, but still trying to get the ball down the field, but not throwing it into coverage. You know, don't want to risk the interception because you have two minutes here. Two minutes. You're down seven. It's homecoming. You're going to see some conservative shots in the field, probably in our screen pass to Seamus O'Connell mixed in there. Got to get some points before halftime. The running back is the freshman, Amarian Ford. The sophomore, D.C. Taps, got a quarterback with four receivers. He'll throw to the near side complete. Flag comes in late. It's about a five- or six-yard gain, depending on what the uh, the call is on that one. It was Jaden Johnson, the sophomore, on the reception. So illegal receiver downfield for Father Ryan. So the officials talk things over. One fifty-three to go, second quarter. Innsworth seven, Father Ryan zero. But the Irish with the ball and one timeout. And I'm not sure if the officials just are discussing where to spot the ball or what what is going on for them here. Is there's a discussion at midfield? Illegal touching, is that what the call was? Got the referee doing the Macarena out there. It's a loss of down. So five-yard penalty and a loss of down. Not what Father Ryan wanted there. Minute 53 to go and counting as they wind the clock. Father Ryan has only one timeout. Ensworth has all three. But the Irish are going to get three receivers quick to that far side with one to the near. And with Ford in there to block... For Seamus O'Connell, O'Connell like quarterback's going to run with it. And he'll go out of bounds at the 48-yard line of Innsworth, stopping the clock a minute 37 to go second quarter. And that was the first time we've seen uh, Seamus come in at the Wildcat, which I expect to see a little more often here, but I guess maybe trying to save him for the second half. But that was a smart play. You got the yards back. He's third and ten, which is manageable in a two-minute offense. Interesting to see what Father Ryan will draw up here on third and ten from the Ensworth 48-yard line. A minute 37 to go second quarter, and Ensworth leading Father Ryan 7 to nothing. Tab Scott, is there some pressure brought? We'll throw over the middle, complete. Past the 30, it's Rewers, past the 20. Tackled at the 10-yard line, Irish looking first and goal after the long pass to Revan Rewers. Rewers had a step on him, slowed down a little bit, trying to make a play happen. Wait, a catch in the seam. Good play call. It was good recognition right there by Tab Scott. Saw an inside linebacker blitz that opened up the middle a little bit. And now the Irish quick to the line. It's not quite first and goal. They'll spot it at the 11. It's going to be a handoff. Antonio Wright. So I was trying to sneak one through real quick. I'm at 12 and counting. And it'll be about a two-yard gain. you got to get to the line quick here. You've got them on the heels. You've got to go quicker. It's a two-minute offense, yet you just had a big play. You can't just... Uh, take your time and run the ball and slow things down. That's how you stop your momentum. They've got to get going fast. This is taking too long. 53 seconds to go, second quarter. Parker Erdman into the game. As Haley came to the sideline, Jaden Johnson tried to get in, but he was denied. He's going to throw to that corner. End zone, touchdown, Irish Seamus O'Connell. So Father Ryan strikes with 43 seconds to go in this first half, and the Irish are an extra point away from tying it up. Good play call. They rolled him out again. We saw that play on the first couple of drives. Haven't really seen it since. And so Father Ryan, after getting up the long touchdown very early in that first quarter, has now tied things up with Zach Wesnowski to attempt the extra point. The kick is up and good. So the game is now tied at 7. 43 seconds to go second quarter. Now, noteworthy, though, Innsworth has all three of its timeouts. And they now face the decision, depending, I guess, how far the kickoff goes, how aggressive they want to be here, knowing that they received the ball to start the second half. It's a tie game. Why risk being aggressive when you're getting the ball in the second half? I think Ensworth will just run the ball, play it smart. Let's get in the halftime. 
Hensworth, they've opened up the passing game a lot more than I had expected they would and haven't gone with a run nearly like I would have anticipated, especially after seeing that first 80-yard touchdown run from Lawrence, who managed to break into the open field. Since then, by and large, the Irish have managed to bottle up that Tigers rushing attack. I felt that was one of the keys to the game, and I would suggest that's the case as we're looking at a 7-all tie late in this first half. Turrentine and Horton are the deep men to return for Ensworth. They're standing at their own 15-yard line. Apparently, they do not anticipate a long kickoff from Father Ryan's Zach Wesnowski. It is that intermediate length kick. Be fielded at the 22 or 23-yard line by Turrentine. Going to the far side past David Russell. Trying to find a seam. Finally tackled in Father Ryan territory at the Irish 48-yard line. Good thing David Russell was in on that kickoff. Slow him down a little bit. Ensworth last week against Trezevant. Their offense wasn't out there just a whole lot because they had several, multiple kick returns for touchdowns, the defensive touchdowns, things of that nature. So a good kick return there. And so three timeouts, 36 seconds to go first half. Ends worth of the ball at the Father Ryan 48-yard line. Fred Jackson's long this season, he's two for three on field goals, was from 46. So on first and 10, play fake. Kenneth his time. Throws downfield, and it's knocked away. A great job defensively. Father Ryan is it was Seamus O'Connell getting in there with a win and breaking up the pass. One-on-one -on -one coverage, someone was going to catch, was, either a great catch was going to be made or a great defensive play was going to be made. And that time it came out in Seamus' favor. He got in there smartly. Uh, minimal contact, went for the ball, incomplete, good coverage. Senior versus senior on that one, going up against Wynn. Ball's incomplete. 28 seconds to go second quarter in a tie game. Ends with the ball at the Father Ryan, 48. Out of the shotgun, it's Kennan. Kennan's going to run with it. To the Father Ryan, 40, has the first down, past the 30, and he'll go out of bounds voluntarily at the 25-yard line. 19 seconds to go, and one timeout still in the pocket for Ensworth. They seem to have a quarterback spy there set up by the Irish defense. However, it was just some good blocking by Ensworth. Kennan is a threat. Now, that's interesting. Ensworth, I was looking at the wrong. Of course, Ensworth had three timeouts, so they can use one here. I guess it wasn't all that important for Kennan to get out of bounds, although effective as it did stop the clock. So 19 seconds to go in a tie game late second quarter. The ball on the far hash. The nose of the ball right at the Father Ryan 25-yard line. Just look for some quick shots for the end zone. You're well within field goal range. Maybe try to get the ball down to the 20, but there's really no need to move it anywhere other than uh, maybe the middle of the field, whatever you know, the kicker prefers. So we'll just see, kind of see what it's worth. I just expect three quick shots to the end zone. They can throw over the middle if they're so inclined, just because of the two timeouts they're sitting on. But with 19 seconds, you have to think, and knowing the way that Kinnon can buy time running with the ball in the backfield, that can be advantageous, but it can also eat a lot of time off the clock. It's kind of similar to the end of the first half last week against Ravenwood. The Raptors were driving, but time ran out of them. They'll send Lawrence in motion to the near side for a three-receiver look. And Kinnon by himself at the 30-yard line. Irish only bring three defenders. A fourth comes in late, and it's intercepted. Irish with the interception on that far side, and going with it past the 40. And finally tackled at one man to beat. Big number 71 brought him down. Got to be And the flag on the play. Flag on the play. Just through near side. It was after the play. So Grayson Hubbock, I couldn't see his number from way over there. Hubbock. He got his hands on the ball, looking for a second. It might bobble out, but he secured it all the way back into Ensworth territory. And we'll see what this flag is here after the play. Father Ryan is one timeout. It's, again, like, it's against Ensworth, I believe. So a choice here for Father Ryan with seven seconds. They got one timeout, so a quick throw over the middle is doable. But with the ball at the... Oh, it was a sideline warning. So that's not an actual penalty. It will be a penalty if there's a second sideline warning. I mean, I, I understand that that sideline, if you didn't see it, was crazy. I think with the way they're huddling up, I think D.C., he's got the arm. Throw it deep. They will heave one up. 
You've got Seamus O'Connell as one of your receivers who is a very good secondary player as well. Throw it deep. We'll see. I can tell getting the sophomore Jaden Johnson into the huddle. Seamus in there likely as a receiver as well with Tabs got the quarterback in there in the middle as they talk things over. Parker Erdman sticks his head in. I think what you won't see from this is people wondering, well, maybe they're going to do a bunch of laterals. No. No, I don't think they're going to see this. No, this they're going to throw it deep. They're not going to risk all this ball flying around type of thing. And it's very dangerous to make a play. In a tie game against an opponent that has been playing very well, as Ensworth has, you would not be doing laterals or something that Ensworth could take back, get a touchdown at the end of the first half and have momentum, plus getting the ball to start the second half. But I do think you're right, Owen, that we might see Father Ryan dial up the deep pass here. They just used their last timeout. Wesnowski, really, if you're getting beyond 45 yards for him, that's untenable. Well, you really, <laughs> with the time you have, if you wanted to kick a field goal, I mean, it's just kind of humanly impossible to get in Zach Wisnowski's range in seven seconds and still kick a field goal. You need like a 20-yard slant to the sideline. And you need a Usain Bolt to run it for you. So that would, I would guess that's not Father Ryan's mindset right here. May just see if they can throw it deep. Okay. Well, we could be talking about all this and it'll be just a handoff to Antonio Wright. We'll see. I don't know. You call that timeout. I, I, think, I think you go for it. Looks like they will. Ends with spring some heat. It's a long throw. David Ward. And it falls incomplete. A good effort, but as the clock hits triple zero, we've reached halftime. You're scored halftime. Father Ryan, seven. Ensworth, seven. Ensworth will receive the ball to start the second half. We're going to take a timeout, get the extended halftime coming up with homecoming, and I'll be back on the other side. This is ATW SportsCast. And welcome back behind the Crescent ATW Sportscast. Owen Doherty here with you. It's homecoming here at Father Ryan, and we're about to presenting these years' attendance and some alumni back with us. We are pleased to welcome back to the field the Father Ryan alumna who walked across the field last year and heard her name called out as homecoming queen who wanted to be part of the celebration to crown this year's queen. From 2017, you will see Miss Emily Hosteller, class of 2018, and the homecoming queen of 2017. She will be crowning this year's homecoming queen. We are so happy to have her back here at Father Ryan. Such a bright young lady, beautiful personality. So expect this halftime to run over the 20-minute limit that we had set up. A lot of interesting stuff. 
band out in all black, soon tie white gloves. Very official looking. This homecoming celebration, always so, so good. So what we're going to see here is you're going to have, of course, the we have alumna coming up here for our homecoming celebrations, followed by a performance by the marching band and the dance team. It's going to be a great 20 minutes if it even gets in there. I imagine it will take closer to 30. We appreciate you turning tuning in with us. That's Anne Marie Rogers as a former homecoming queen from 1994, 1993 homecoming graduate of 1994. That was the first. There's Miss Emily Hosteller stepping out on your screen onto the bottom 50, waiting to meet all the attendants. We're going to start out with our sophomore attendants. And our first sophomore is Miss Miss Errol Byerline. She is the daughter of Mr. Jeff Berline and Miss Pamela Standish. She's a graduate of St. Henry School, and she is a student ambassador and a member of the girls' cross-country and track teams. She is escorted by her friend, Mr. Jack Smith. Marilee Holst. Marily Holst. She's the daughter of Randy and Kim Holst. She attended Christ the King School and is a member of the girls' volleyball and girls' basketball teams. Will Stacy is her escort tonight. And those are our two sophomore attendants. Now we'll move on to our junior attendants. Miss Rebecca Dark. She is the daughter of John and Meg Dark. She's a graduate of Christ the King School, and she is a member of the girls' soccer and lacrosse teams and the Respect Life Club. Her escort is Mr. Peter Faulkner. Our next junior attendant is Miss Abigail Fish. She's the daughter of Alex and Lisa Fish. She attends St. Matthew and is a student ambassador and a peer mentor. She's also a member of the student council in the Irish Service Corps. Her escort is her escort is Mr. Scott Derrick. Miss Mary Hampton Hayden is the daughter of Christopher Hayden and Mandy Hayden. She's also a graduate of St. Matthew School, and she is a member of the girls' cross-country team, the girls' swim team, the girls' track team, and music ministry. She is also head of community outreach for the Relay for Life Committee. Her escort is Jason Thomas. Nadia Hobeka is our next junior attendant. She is the daughter of Omar and Mary Hobeka. She attended Christ the King School and is a member of the girls' soccer team, the girls' track team, and the Respect Life Club. Will Rosenblatt is her escort. And our last junior attendant, a name a lot of you know, Miss Kate Hoots. She is the daughter of Tim and Nancy Hoots, a graduate of St. Henry School. She is a member of the girls' volleyball and basketball teams, the Positive Action Club, and was elected vice president of the junior class. Her escort is Forrest Smith. And now we have our seniors. This is Nicole Balmacita. She's the daughter of Fernando and Eileen Balmacita. She attends St. Edward's School and is a member of the girls' cross country team, girls' tennis team, and participates in youth government and model unit. In Mr. Chaz Wopel is her escort. Our next senior is Miss Cameron Broussard. She is the daughter of Tracy and Maria Broussard. A graduate of Thurman Francis Arts Academy, she is a member of the girls' basketball team behind the crest, 
Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and Best Buddies Club. She is the co-chair of the Special Olympics Committee, and Mr. Jack True is her escort tonight. Next, we have Emmy Irwin. She is the daughter of Ryan and Nicole Irwin. She attended St. Henry School and is a member of the football cheerleading squad, the Relay for Life Committee, the Respect Life Club, the Irish Service Corps, and the Moyna staff. She is escorted by Mr. Dylan Farrell. Carly Hendrickson. She is the daughter of Radley Hendrickson and Janet Fedorowicz. A graduate of Holy Rosary Academy, she is a member of the football cheerleading squad and the competition cheerleading squad. She is also a Relay for Life team captain and a Eucharistic minister. Mr. Sam Estep is her escort. Next up is Camille Knoll. She's the daughter of Alex and Chris Ann Knoll. She attended Holy Rosary Academy as well and is a member of the girls' basketball team, the girls' track team, the Magnificat group. She's also a Relay for Life team co-captain and a Eucharistic minister. Mr. Cooper Elazar is her escort. Finally on our list is the daughter of Mark is Cindy Proctor, the daughter of Mark and Kim Proctor. A graduate of St. Matthew School, she is a member of the girls track team. Her escort is Mr. Sean Clunan. And now, so now we'll go with our senior class officers. Truman McDaniel, he's a president and a graduate of Sunset Middle School. John Bote, vice president, graduate of St. Bernard Academy. Cameron Broussard, secretary, a graduate of Thurman Francis Arts Academy. And Sebastian Jones, she, he is the treasurer and an alumnus of Christ the King. Our student body officers, Tessa Bellani. President of Saint President in Saint Matthew uh, uh, Tessa Bellani, she's the student body president and a Saint Matthew alumna. Seamus O'Connell, obviously up on the hill. He's a vice pres he's the vice president and from Christ the King. Sarah Berry, the secretary, Saint Joseph graduate. And now we'll hear who our new queen is, Father Ryan. And Miss Camille Knoll is your 2018 homecoming queen. Congratulations to Camille. Always such a good moment right now. Her parents, Alex and Chris must be so proud. And such a good moment. You can stay in tune next as we have performances from the band and the dance team coming up close with eight minutes left here at our homecoming halftime. Thank you for joining us on this year's Homecoming Queen presentation. Congratulations, Camille.
And welcome back to Norwood Drive, Owen Doherty, from behind the crest, Lou Pickney, ATW Sportscast. And Tours can receive the opening half, but before then, we got some score updates of interest. 35-10, to 10, Independence High over Brentwood. When That's a big game, Lou. Brentwood, One next week, week into Williamson County, back we go. One week from tonight, that's an upset in the making there. Two and three Independence on the road. Big win down there. It's always great games coming out of the public, uh, public school system in Williamson County. 27-3, McCauley on top of Pope. That game should be ending soon. JP2 uh, lost in a nail-biter last week. This one not as much as a nail-biter. 28-7 also in Chattanooga. Brentwood Academy leading Baylor in the fourth quarter. That one, nothing much there since we last up to you. Uh, Brentwood Academy has scored two touchdowns. That game should be over soon. And now, finally, an update off of West End Avenue. NBA leading White Station from Memphis, 28 to nothing. NBA looking to move to 6-1 and one on the season, although that particular game not a Division II AAA East Middle game, so won't affect standings as far as that goes. We're about to start the second half for the very long halftime break. Irish will be kicking off. Innsworth won the opening coin toss, <coughs> deferred, and so they have the privilege of returning. And is the dangerous Andre Turrentine back deep. The Irish may go short on this. Instead, it's a line drive. This could go into the end zone. How about that? A touchback. Zach I'm Wesnowski. Like one here. Yeah, it's only the second this season. So Wesnowski off the carom. Ends with his playing up, thinking that Father Ryan would go to that intermediate length kick. And then Wesnowski broke out the strong leg. So first and 10 ends worth from its own 20 yard line, just underway third quarter, and a game tied at seven. It'll be interesting to see if. Ensworth made any halftime adjustments, especially when it comes to their running game. I mean, the quarterback, Cole Kennan, under center. They send a receiver in motion. Set it off for Lawrence. Keyshawn Lawrence to the outside. A hole opened up for a moment when it looked like it was a handful of jersey on Anthony Wright. But whatever the case, Lawrence got the edge, and he got the first down. I think a lot of other people were thinking that in the building, Lou. It wasn't just you. Definitely looked like there was some holding there. But, hey, no call. you got to get past that pretty quickly. Obviously, it was apparent that it just wasn't obvious enough. Uh, so, no call there. Um, let's see what adjustments Father Ryan has made. 15 yards on the carry for Lawrence. First and 10. Ends worth from its own 35-yard line. They're going to send a pair of players in motion to this near side with two receivers spread out wide. Be running up the middle. At least that's the effort. Spun around as Gabriel McDaniel. And it'll have maybe a two-yard gain. And now you see some of the players getting hyped down low on the bottom of your screen on the sideline. Let's let's see what Ensworth draws up on second down. We'll see if they – you were talking about, Lou, how they were opening up more to the passing game. Let's see if they tried again here on throwing the ball. Just trying to figure out who made the tackle there. Couldn't hear it through my headset. But the PA announcer said it may have been Dylan Timmons from the inside linebacker spot. He was leased in that vicinity. Second and ten. They'll say no gain. Well, that, the scoreboard's wrong. Never mind. Second and eight. Ball at the Ensworth 37-yard line. It's going to be another handoff, this time going to the far side as they try and spread out Father Ryan. And it's going to be good for about a six-yard carry, Gabriel McDaniel. Other than the first play from scrimmage for Ensworth and the first plays of scrimmage here in the second half, in the first half and the second half for Ensworth, they really haven't even had any success running the ball on the outside on the edge. They will credit Jackson Brown from the inside linebacker position with a stop. This is an important third down for the Father Ryan defense. Get off quick. Put the offense back on. They had some momentum. Let's see what happens. 10.40 to go third quarter. Father Ryan 7, Innsworth 7. The Tigers looking at a third and two. They need to reach their own 45. They're going to hand it off to Keyshawn Lawrence, and it's the tackle for loss. Anthony Wright. No, sir. Anthony Wright fired off the edge. Fantastic speed. And Innsworth just wasn't – I mean, it just looked like they weren't even ready for it. Good job by the junior. So, making plays. So on fourth and five, the Irish have to be careful not to jump here, but presuming that they don't and that it's actually a punt attempt, it'll be Jackson back to punt, and Parker Erdman set to return for Father Ryan, standing right at the Irish 30. It's a high spinning punt. It's going to go toward this near sideline, and it'll be blown dead at the 36-yard line as an Innsworth player hauled it in as he fell out of bounds. So Father Ryan 
after giving up the 15-yard gain from the first play. At that point, forces three plays in less than 10 yards for Ensworth. Ensworth punts, and the Irish will start its first offensive drive of the second half, first and 10 from its own 36-yard line. 9.54 to go third quarter, and a game tied at seven. Father Ryan will go with four wide receivers, two bunched up to this near side, two to the far. D.C. Tabs got throws near side complete, and then out of bounds for about a seven-yard gain. Richard Bryan on the reception. Oh, it was Erdman. I thought it was an eight. He said it was a three, not 89. It's 39. It was Parker Erdman on the reception. Yeah, I'm really impressed with what we've seen from this freshman, Parker. Well, he's actually a sophomore. At least that's what oh, I've got this guy. correction, he's a sophomore. Uh, underclassman who's definitely been a key player this season as the flag comes in. Plenty of time to go in the play clock. Right, it's against Father Ryan. I'm not really sure where the false start came in. Um, maybe it was some kind of illegal motion by one of the wide receivers. I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe like slight gesture of hand magic. I, I really don't know. I didn't see anything off the line. It was something that plagued Father Ryan in particular against NBA. And that was a tough enough defense to face when you're looking at first and 10, not first and 15. Second and nine here for the Irish, 9.47 to go third quarter, and a game tied at seven. And it's number seven, Tabscott throwing over the middle. Evan Rewers complete, holds onto the ball after taking a hard hit, and it'll be a first down for the Irish. And that's a catch senior leaders make in these types of games. He got absolutely knocked, and he held onto the ball. Good hands, Rewers. It was Wesley Walker on the stop, the uh, free safety. Starting free safety for this Innsworth team. First and 10, Father Ryan from the Innsworth 48-yard line. 9.32 to go third quarter. This is going to be a handoff, a Marion Ford up the middle, and about a two-yard gain on that. you got to keep the run going a little bit. you got to keep Innsworth on their toes. You can't just pass the ball on this team. It's not on this defense. It's not going to work. To concur with you on that, a couple players in there, Win and Malone, and Malone, number 32, plays a lot at inside linebackers. The injuries have kind of forced him into the spot from time to time this season. But in turn, that seems to have kept him from having as many opportunities running the ball. Second and eight for the Irish. A little trouble to snap, but Tapscott gets it, steps up in trouble. He'll be brought down. A flag comes in late, though. I think they might get uh, Ty Tyler Barron with a face mask. He came around the edge. You saw DC's head twist a little bit. You called it, Owen. That's what it was. It, that unusual when somebody's head shifts like that. Well, yeah, when you see all of a sudden, especially out of a quarterback, um, when you see their set, uh, their head do a you know a, a 90 degree turn just like that, I mean, it's most of the time that's got to be a face mask. There's really no other way you can turn someone's head unless you're punching them, and that that's a little illegal too. Yeah, that's frowned upon. It's so Irish, the beneficiary, it's a very talented player, is Tyler Barron. Only a junior. He's probably going to go D1. But on that one, the face mask is Father Ryan. A fresh set of downs. First and 10 from the Innsworth 38. A handoff going to the far side. That's Antonio Wright. But he's going to be balled up quickly. Maybe a one-yard game. Maybe. No room for Antonio there, but smart play. We didn't see him earlier. Wasn't trying to create something that wasn't there. He just got what he could when he saw the slightest opening. They'll say that he made it back to the line of scrimmage and no further. They'll bring Noah Haley, the H back to the sideline. As Johnson comes in as a fourth receiver, two on either side for Father Ryan, 8-10 to go third quarter, and a game tied at seven. From the shotgun, Tapscott is going to throw far sideline, incomplete. Intended for, I believe, David Ward on that far side. Indeed, it was Ward, the intended receiver. Falls incomplete, third and ten for Father Ryan. Ball at the... Tigers 38 yard line. 7.58 to go third quarter. Father Ryan 7, Ensworth 7. Father Ryan trying to beat Ensworth for the first time in 11 years. Four receivers again, this time three to the near side on this third and 10. Tab Scott set up the receiver screen. Seamus O'Connell at the 40. Cuts to the 35. Flag comes in late. Seamus is going to be about two or three yards shy of the first down marker, but this one could be coming back. Well, Personal foul, roughing the passer on Innsworth. That's what I was about to say. D.C. Tapscott was hit, and he got up pointing first down. He looked at the ref. He gave that arrow, and, hey, the flag was thrown. So good job for D.C. for just being there. Well, and Innsworth, this has been something that's plagued them, those unnecessary penalties. 
and they've had some struggles as a result. In this case, for Father Ryan, now with the ball once again in the red zone of the Tigers in a game that's tied, 7.40 to go third quarter. And the Irish trying to take their first lead of the game. Father Ryan had the opening kickoff, got it all the way down to about the five-yard line of Innsworth. So the Irish will take a timeout here. That's an interesting turn of events. Irish are going to talk things over before this first and ten play. This gives me an opportunity to talk a little bit about Father Ryan's cross-country team. Boys and girls cross-country team hit the road early tomorrow morning, participating in the Henry Horton Invitational at Henry Horton State Park. Boys race at 8.30, girls race at 9.15. Next weekend, Father Ryan's runners travel to Alabama be running in the Jesse Owens Invitational. Also, earlier this month, Father Ryan's boys won the Coleman Midget Invitational and placed 11th in the Louisville Trinity Invitational. That's one of the country's most prestigious meets. Lady Irish also placed 11th at the Trinity Meet and are runners-up at the Coleman Midget Invitational. So plenty of sports activity going on here at Father Ryan High School. Out of the timeout, it's going to be 1st and 10 Irish and a game tied at 7 early midway through the third quarter with the ball spotted at the 16-yard line of the Tigers. Tab Scott at quarterback. Sheamus way over here on this near side is the lone receiver over here. It's going to be a handoff. Antonio Wright, but he's going to be swallowed up quickly. And it was, it was Barron getting in there again. Tyler Barron, a defensive end in that 3-4 set. A junior that's every bit of 6'5", 250 as they list him. So no gain on that one. Second and 10, Father Ryan. Ball at the Endsworth 16-yard line. Father Ryan 7, Endsworth 7. As we approach the 7-minute mark of this third quarter. Three receivers now on second and 10. Rewers in the slot on the near side. This is going to be a far side throw into the end zone. Incomplete. David Ward, the intended receiver. This is a very important third down play. You have the opportunity to not only get the lead with a field goal, but to really get a, a whole touchdown lead against the Tigers, who don't really seem to have anything going for them really right now. It would be a great opportunity for Father Ryan, especially after missing a chip shot field goal on its first possession. So with the game tied at 7 and 6.53 to go in this third quarter, Father Ryan on third and 10. There'll be four receivers with trips to the near side, and that's where Tapscott's going to roll, throw, bounces, and it falls incomplete. And a flag well, comes in late. They just killed themselves. He stood over the receiver, and that's bad sportsmanship. And once again, Endsworth with little class in some of these penalties, these late after-the-play penalties, and it drives me crazy because this isn't unusual from them. Parker Erdman, the intended receiver, and the hit itself, it was a great hit. Jarred the ball loose. It yeah, was it was really a perfectly legal hit. That's what they're telling, you know, players. Make contact with the ball, you use your shoulder. You don't make contact there, you use your shoulder, hit their bot, their upper body. And that's exactly what they, It was a great hit, but it just it's stupid stuff like that. It drives me crazy. So it's unsportsmanlike conduct. And that's, again, if it was an illegal hit, it would be different. Well, they say two penalties, so hang on. Wow. So a personal foul penalty and an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And it's just so they did throw the flag for the hit, it sounds like. We're really we're trying to listen into a couple of things and pay attention. <laughs> we're we're really confused. We know there was a personal foul for after the play standing over. Well, it had maybe they maybe they I threw mean, one on the hit. That's the only thing I can guess. And if so, then that's a shame. Yeah, because that was a clean play. That you was know. a clean play. I'll give that to him. But just the, that was definitely unsportsmanlike conduct. You can't stand over someone. You you just can't. That's you know that it's been taught that. It's just it's a it's a very you know low move. Seamus O'Connell lines up at quarterback for the Irish. First and goal from the eight. David Russell. And David Russell to his right. Defensive lineman for the second consecutive game. Getting a look at the running back position. And it's going to be a handoff to David Russell trying to make a move toward this near side, spun around for about a two-yard gain. They tried earlier. He almost broke free the first time he got in. He got down to the three this time, five yards. And it took Sam Krupp to bring him down, number 77, a 6'2", 286-pound junior. So if you're going to bring down David Russell, 
You need a player with that kind of size. Interesting how they're using him, Tim. They're using a little bit more of his speed. They haven't ran him to the inside yet on these packages. Russell remains in next to Seamus O'Connell. Second and goal from the three. Plowing forward, David Russell. He'll be close. They're saying he's down about the two-yard line. Two. So, third down for the Irish. Well, Lou, I think it's time to put in all the big boys, give it to him again, and bow over the top. <laughs> they may do that. I know David could jump. I've seen him do it. Well, he'll come to the sideline. It'll be Antonio Wright coming in, the usual starting running back for the Irish, but it will also be Seamus O'Connell at quarterback, a threat to run himself. Well, Thorin's a deep passing team. This is a short passing situation. And they line it up. Now, it will be Seamus rolling out, rolling out through to the back of the end zone. Too high, incomplete. I don't understand that play call too much. Seamus, while he can throw on the throw, when you're just going to that back side of the end zone, that's just such a hard throw for a guy that really isn't, you know, in rhythm to be a throwing quarterback. That's just, um, it's, it's a little bit of a stranger play call. I guess they were trying to catch Ensworth off guard. Didn't work. It's a player down for Ensworth on that far side. I saw it was a single-digit number, but then he rolled over, and I couldn't see it. Now, won't venture to guess. Hopefully, it's just a cramp, although it's much cooler tonight than it has been really any of the past previous weeks, these past six weeks, which is what happens when you start football in the middle of August. Yes, it's a little weird how early they started this year, but, hey, we are got a month left, and it's finally getting cold. We're over halfway done. It's only finally starting to cool down. Yeah. Fall's my favorite season of the year. I absolutely love autumn. Not I, only I, because I, of the weather, but just because of the football. Well, there's a lot to like about this time of year, i got to tell you. Well, Ensworth's gathering are on its far side. It's Usually that's not a very... Uh, well, they're not standing right next to the injured player, but... Well, it's hard to see. Senator. Sorry, there's a lot of white jerseys going on over there. It's hard to see what they were huddling around. I do see that now he's down. So, again, Father Ryan, one week from tonight, playing at Brentwood High. Worth going, I guess, over the upcoming schedule real quick. The following week, the 12th of October, is a bye week. So, an open Friday night. After that, trip down to Chattanooga on the 19th of October, playing Baylor before very dangerous Macaulay comes here to Giacosa Stadium to round out the 2018 regular season. Macaulay seem that they they always seem to have a number father ryan especially in chattanooga they always have father ryan's number trying to get a look at the injured player on that far side it might have been well it looks like i saw a number nine if so that's that's tyler Barron. father ryan's going to go for a field goal it looks like on fourth and goal from the two was nofsky i'll wait this time before i say it's good it is good at the official signal. So Father Ryan takes its first lead of the game. 5.25 to go third quarter. Your score, Father Ryan 10, Endsworth 7. We'll be right back here on ATW SportsCast. Five twenty-five to go third quarter. Father Ryan 10, Ensworth 7. And a defensive battle that saw the Irish take its first lead of the game just moments ago. Some announcement being made to the crowd. They had the Pride in the Pit barbecue contest. I got to sample, I think, about everybody's in there. Some delicious food. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's so good every year. It, it really is. And it always seems to get better. Everyone somehow makes it better every year. And you're wondering, next year, oh, how are they going to make it better this year? And they just somehow do it. It's just, it's so great. Hey, that's competition for you. When you know you've got some of the best in the greater Nashville area trying to put out a better barbecue offering than you have, a bit of incentive. So they will have the ball teed at the Father Ryan 40 for Zach Wesnowski, who's going to kick off. Only one player deep for Innsworth. That's Andre Turrentine. <laughs> 
and as a spinning kick toward the far side, fielded the 37. A dangerous play there, being finally brought into Father Ryan territory. That was number 42, Elijah Brooks, inside linebacker, but on special teams there, a nice return for Ensworth. On that one, Father Ryan would have been just better off kicking the ball out of bounds. But the way it turned out, it's going to be Ensworth ball in Irish territory, first and 10 at the Father Ryan 48-yard line, nine eight, or excuse me, 5-18 to go, third quarter. Father Ryan 10, Ensworth 7. Very interesting to me that Father Ryan has James Reed in there again at the far cornerback spot. He hasn't played much at all this season on the varsity level. He's only a freshman, but a lot of trust being shown in him by this Irish team as it'll be a four-receiver look on this first and ten for Ensworth. Kenan throws over the middle, and it's caught at the 25-yard line. The ball comes out, but the ground caused the fumble. Just mentioned Reed on the play. He made the stop finally, but... On the reception, it was Dante Wynn, one of the leading receivers on this Ensworth team. And Wynn, just of one of many on that Ensworth roster who can show how fast they can turn a game. First and ten, Ensworth. They trail the Irish by three, less than five minutes to go third quarter. But they have the ball to the Father Ryan, 13-yard line. Be a handoff to Lawrence, pushing up the middle. Second effort, and he's in for a touchdown. Keyshawn Lawrence, his second scoring touchdown run of the game, and Ensworth has retaken the lead. So Ensworth with a quick counterpunch, culminating in the touchdown run by Keyshawn Lawrence. Quick is correct, not a lot hole going on for the Irish defense there. Fred Jackson will line up to attempt an extra point. This is not a minor thing either with Ensworth up 13 to 10. If he hits this, the Irish will need more than a field goal to keep it going. A little slow on the snap, but the kick is away and good. So the extra point splits the uprights. 4.42 to go third quarter. It's now Ensworth 14, Father Ryan 10. And after a very defensive-minded first half, some scoring by both teams here in this third quarter, Father Ryan, after going up, briefly, now sees itself looking at a four-point deficit. Well, we've seen Ensworth start a half fast already here, and on the second possession, they I mean, they just went down the field in three plays, and they I mean, in two plays, really, and they just show you what they can do. Um, and so, really give credit to this Irish defense for showing, really stalling them this whole first half and up to this, up to that point, because you just saw, folks, how lethal they can be if you let them. Well, and the challenge, the long pass on that drive was the Dante win. And you've got a senior going over the middle like that, and you've got a freshman having to make a tackle. It puts you at a disadvantage, to be sure. The throw was on the money. I'm not blaming Reed on that one. It's just the way it played out. So that now with Ensworth leading Father Ryan 14-10, to 10, 4.42 to go third quarter, it's going to be a kickoff. And they may try what they did in the last kickoff. So they bring Hayden Horn back in, their backup kicker. Going to try and sky one towards that far sideline. Be filled by the Irish of the 24. Brought past the 30. Back around. Flag comes in. Finally brought down at the 35-yard line. Not really sure what this flag is on. It was thrown from the back side, so presumably it's coming on Ensworth. Michael Hart's on the return. Let's see what the flag is Face mask again, the second one of this half for Ensworth. So Father Ryan, the beneficiary of uh, another penalty against Ensworth. And you're right, Owen, that's their second face mask penalty in this half alone, this quarter. 4.31 to go third quarter, Ensworth 14, Father Ryan 10. Back-to-back -back possessions if you want, really want to get that specific with it. Johnson and Ward, the receivers to the far side, Rewers in the slot, and O'Connell out wide on the near side here. On this first and ten, under pressure, Tabscott's going to throw far sideline. Too high for David Ward, incomplete. Yeah, Tabscott trying to move up in the pocket. was close to the line, and, you know, he's just not there yet. And he doesn't exactly have the best throw on the run. He can, and we've seen him do it, and when he does it, it looks fantastic. But um, just not all the time in rhythm, especially on the run. 
So us changing things up for Father Ryan is they're going to go three receivers to the near side this time, one to the far, second and ten. Tapscott's going to hand it off. Marion Ford will have about a three-yard gain. And you mentioned Tapscott, and you know, accuracy is a struggle for any quarterback, but the arm strength he has, if you're going to miss, miss high and long and not short and weak. And we've seen some of the anticipation he has, especially with throws. I mean, you were talking about during uh, uh, NBA after the J.P. 2 game. He has some great anticipation, and he has a lot of potential. Again, only a sophomore in there. Trusting him to play quarterback. Taps got out of the gun on this third and eight with three receivers to the near side, one to the far. Good protection. Throws over the middle. Caught. Seamus O'Connell has the first down past the 40. Cuts it back to the 35, to the 30. And then escorted out of bounds with a late push. That was about to be an interception, and that's what your senior leaders are supposed to do. They go for the ball, they make the play, and they keep this drive going. Andre Turin time better be careful. Number two. He already has a, a personal foul penalty. He can't be pushing people. He's an excellent player, but he's got to keep his uh, mind in the game. This is a first down for Father Ryan. No penalty there, to be fair. He just chased down Sheamus and forced him out of bounds. First and 10, Father Ryan at the Ensworth 27-yard line. Father Ryan trails by four. This will be a handoff. Antonio Wright churning his legs, forcing Ensworth to bring in additional defenders to finally bring him down. Good. That was one of the better runs we've seen from Antonio tonight. Finally ends with dropping back to protect the pass. Had some space for Antonio. 3.09 to go third quarter. Ends worth 14. Father Ryan 10. Second and five from the Endsworth 22-yard line. It's be another handoff, Antonio Wright. Not as much luck on that one. So no gain on that one. Third and five now for Father Ryan. Yeah, now auto room there. Ensworth was bringing six. So Parker Erdman into the game to spell Noah Haley. And when you see that, it almost always means four receivers. With Haley used as an H-back slash tight end. 2.33 to go third quarter. Ensworth 14, Father Ryan 10. Irish looking at third and five. Tab's got in the gun with Antonio Wright to his left. A throw to the far side complete. David Ward has the first down for the Irish inside the 15-yard line. And that's what we were just talking about, what I was just talking about, the anticipation on that slant route. The timing you work out in practice, he saw the coverage, and he expected his receiver to be in the right spot, and David Ward was. And that's in the past where Taps got his thrown with anticipation, with success. It's been primarily with Ward. Father Ryan quick to the lineup for the first down from the 13. It's going to be a handoff. Antonio Wright spun around. Maybe a one-yard game. But, I mean, it's difficult for NFL quarterbacks to throw with anticipation. It's, you have to have a lot of trust in your receivers as well, but when you can execute it properly, you give yourself a massive advantage. One-yard gain. Less than two minutes to go in this third quarter. Father Ryan down by four. They're looking at second and nine in the Innsworth red zone. Tapscott feels the pressure, rolls to the near side. Flag comes in. It's complete to Seamus O'Connell. He'll be tackled. This play's probably coming back. And it is holding. Dante Wynn with the tackle, but somewhat immaterial. As you noted, Owen, it is the holding call. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Well, Father Ryan had the ball inside the Innsworth 15-yard line. And while certainly a touchdown would be what the Irish would like here, you don't want to move yourself out of field goal range. That would be a very inopportune turn of events. Look for one of those anticipation passes. If Ensworth gives Father Ryan the man coverage that I know they're wanting, look for the down and out about 10 yards down to the 20 on the far side. But I don't. It's Seamus in the quarterback is they're going to split out Tab Scott. It's reverse. Tab Scott's going to throw. He just throws it out of bounds. Well, I think he was expecting Seamus to be on that sideline. I'm not, I'm not really sure if he was throwing that way or not. He was pretty close to the side, almost too low risk of being intercepted. So, I, the, the way the play is usually designed is for the long pass, but it seemed that Ensworth was ready for it there. I think that was Ward that was going deep. 
So if, if that was, in fact, the decision, just throw it away, probably for the best. Third down for the Irish from the Ensworth 32-yard line. They need to make it all the way down to the three to get a first down. Here's Tab Scott buying time in trouble. Throws to a spot in the field where nobody was there for Father Ryan. So it's fourth down. And Father Ryan being out of field goal range after that penalty, that's what I was talking about. And Tapscott's still on the field. Oh, they're going to go for it here. Well, I mean, you're out of field goal range. It's too short to punt the ball. You have good faith in your defense. Well, well. And here comes Tapscott now. Actually, maybe I think they're going to leave Sheamus in that qu quarterback, which either means we're about to see – a pooch, which I think is most likely to happen, or yeah. something crazy. We'll see. If he takes that step back. Yeah, that's typically the uh, there the it tell. Is. Yeah. He's going to try for a coffin corner. It's a spinning kick. It takes oh, an Ensworth bounce. bounce. They had it inside the 20. It bounces out to the Ensworth 21-yard line. And that's sometimes the risk of doing those really high coffin kicks like you uh, – I just said is sometimes if you kick it up high, you get that backward spin coming off your foot like that. It certainly was happened there. Well, after all of that, it will be Ensworth ball at its own 22-yard line. 56 seconds to go third quarter. Ensworth leads Father Ryan 14-10 to in what has been a really good one here at Giacosa Stadium tonight. And with Cole Kennan in at quarterback, three receivers for Ensworth. With two to the near side on this first and ten late in this third quarter. It's going to be, I can't tell if he handed it off or kept it himself. It's a big pile of players. I say it was a handoff. See, Kennan comes spinning out of the pile without the ball. So it was Tyler Barron, usually used, if they use him on offense at all, as a blocker or a tight end, perhaps their answer to David Russell for Father Ryan running with the ball. Three-yard gain on that play. 25 seconds to go third quarter. Father Ryan trailing 14-10. to 10. Here's Kennan throwing high and is batted away. It was face guarding, which is legal, I might add, on the high school level. Intended well, for win. Yeah, especially when you're just not using hands. You do, the the best way to do that is you just got to show when you can tell it, when the ball is coming. When you're doing the face guarding, you have to show that you're not holding. You have to have your hands up trying to, you know, block the pass. Yeah, there was no contact there. Just Reed was right in the way. And again, they're trusting a freshman out there at corner. Pretty big play right here. 14 seconds to go third quarter. Third and seven for Ensworth at their own 25-yard line. They need to make it to the 32. Ken's going to run with it, possibly. Now a late throw. It's complete. They have the first down. Breaking away. This could be trouble. To the 40. Makes a move to the 30. To the 20. Edmondson can't catch him. There's a flag down. It would be a touchdown for Gabriel McDaniel, but there's a flag down. The official, sure. that, the official that threw it didn't put his arms up for a touchdown. That almost always means it's against the team that scored. Now, they'll probably have enough of a gain for a first down and then some. I'm, I'm really not sure. They're lining up for the field goal. No one's stopping them. They may have just picked it up. There, I guess there is no flag. That must have been accidental. So it ends up being a touchdown for Ensworth, a schmoz of a play. Gabriel McDaniel on third and seven, the extra points up. And, it's and that's going to be a flag for running into the kicker. Most likely, Ensworth will just decline take the extra point. No, they'll tack it on to the kickoffs, what they're going to do. So, Father Ryan, after giving up another long touchdown run, going to get pinched for a either running into or roughing the kicker penalty, which would be assessed on the forthcoming kickoff. It is a personal foul, so be of the 15-yard variety. So, instead of kicking off from their own 40-yard line. Ensworth will kick off from the Father Ryan, 45. Ensworth, okay, we reached the end of the third quarter. Score Ensworth, 21, Father Ryan, 10. We'll be right back here on ATW SportsCast.
So we start the fourth quarter here on the campus of Father Ryan High School. Lou Pickney with you, along with from behind the crest, Owen Doherty. Father Ryan, after taking a 10-7 lead midway through this third quarter, saw that lead evaporate. Touchdown run by Lawrence, and then touchdown run just moments ago from McDaniel. Father Ryan then called for roughing the kicker on the extra point. So Ensworth gets to kick off from in Father Ryan territory at the Irish 45-yard line. So this is how the fourth quarter will begin. And once again, the rather unusual approach, Hayden Horn, the backup kicker, with the ball spotted on the near hash mark. They've tried that intermediate length kick, the squib, if you will, that they could potentially recover, but on this, we'll see. It's a deep kick, and he'll get himself an automatic touchback. So not the end of the world for the Irish after the running into the kicker, roughing the kicker penalty on the extra point as they'll start things out first and 10 from their own 20. Now it's time to see how the Irish respond. You get knocked down, but you have to get back up. Irish really haven't had a problem getting down the field. They've had a little bit of help from the Tigers, but they, they just have not been able. They've been down the red zone three times. They've been down the red zone with three times not coming away with any points. A missed field goal and twice just getting knocked out of range, nothing happening. First and ten for the Irish from their own 20-yard line. Twelve minutes to go, fourth quarter. Throw to the near side, incomplete. Tab Scott trying to get the ball to Seamus O'Connell, but wasn't much of a, a Don, gap there to well, find. Well, Dante Wynn was in coverage, and they had two others closing. That was a dangerous pass. Yeah, and if anything, it's a good thing that it sailed Tab out Scott, of him. <laughs> that Tab Scott had so much mustard on that throw. Four receivers, two to either side for Father Ryan, second and ten. Balls of the Irish 20-yard line. Tab Scott throws, incomplete, intended for Johnson on that far sideline. Dominic Wynn was in the vicinity for Innsworth. Father Ryan looks at third and 10, 11.48 to go, fourth quarter. Innsworth leading the Irish by 11 points. So with three receivers to the near side, one to the far, It'll be D.C. Tabscott. Receiver screen, Seamus O'Connell. Running backward, trying to get to the far side of the field. Tabscott tries to throw a block for him. After all, that'll be about a four-yard loss. So Father Ryan tries to get creative with it on third and ten. It doesn't work out. And once again, the punting unit will take the field. Irish did try one fake punt earlier in this game. It was not successful. Ensworth has nobody back. They're finally going to have to have one of their defensive backs run. Try and get in position. That's Malloy. Good skying punt. Player for Father Ryan gets blasted. This is Johnson. Good punt, though, is it will finally be downed at the Ensworth 42-yard line. So having to punt from inside his own 20, Wesnowski. Gives Father Ryan's defense a chance to go out and have a little bit of breathing room with Innsworth starting its, this drive in its own territory from its own 42-yard line. Ten minutes, 55 seconds to go, fourth quarter. Innsworth 21, Father Ryan 10. Irish are trying to beat Innsworth for the first time since 2007, for the first time ever, there at Giacosa Stadium. Cole Kennan operating out of the shotgun. Gabriel McDaniel next to him, and it's going to be a pass. Kennan's going to throw deep. Hopkins is there with the coverage, and it's incomplete. For a second, it looked like Hopkins was going to come down with it. William Wright, the intended receiver, number 86. They don't use him just a whole lot at Innsworth, but on that one, it was a good play call, but just an excellent play by Hopkins to get there and nearly pick it off. 10.46 to go fourth quarter. Innsworth 21, Father Ryan 10. The Tigers looking at second and 10 from their own 42-yard line. And 
This is going to be a, a QB keeper. Kenan Fick, the handoff, kept it himself. Picked up about six yards. That will set the third and four. I wonder now that we're in the fourth quarter, Endsworth got an 11-point lead, two possessions. Do you start running the clock trying to get this thing over with? Because, I mean, you've got a quarterback who can run. You've got two backs who over, over, average over six yards a carry. Is this when you stop throwing it deep after what you just saw, almost giving Father Ryan more life? Uh, life? Zach Smith into the game on the defensive line for Father Ryan on this third and four. The throw to the far side complete. And it'll be enough for a first down. Tulio Malone, he's a very dangerous runner, very difficult to tackle. And on that play, it's enough to move the chains for the Tigers. And what you mentioned, Owen, with ball control, clock control, you may see this is an Innsworth team that likes to run the ball generally. They've thrown a lot more tonight than I was anticipating, but with an 11-point lead, less than 10 minutes to go, and now the ball in Father Ryan territory could be a solid dose of the run as Keyshawn Lawrence comes into the game at running back. Kennan will hand it off to him. Flag comes in. This is probably against Ensworth. They'll probably be coming back. Lawrence trying to slice through on this near side. Finally, David Russell, a good hustle there to get over and make the tackle. Well, Keyshawn Lawrence, it seems as if they were trying to run the clock. You know, usually it's, he tried to bounce outside a little more, but you run the risk of going out of bounds, being short of the first down, stopping the clock. Now you're still running the clock, but, you know, penalty stops it now, obviously. So five yards on the procedure penalty. You get the motion as it was a false start, but that's not a false start. They blow the whistle on a false start. So illegal procedure, first and 15. But, yeah, and I think, though, you're right, Owen, as far as those type of plays, giving it to Lawrence, stretching it out, and then spelling him with either McDaniel or Malone. Their other running back, Bryce Edmondson, injured and out for this game. First and 15, 9.25 to go fourth quarter. Innsworth leads Father Ryan 21 to 10. That's a three receiver, actually a four receiver look, or a three receiver with a H back, and they're going to hand it off. About a four-yard gain, Tulio Malone. Well, I think with the, the spread look that we're seeing from Ensworth, you know, we're talking about, well, we, we might see a lot of heavy package. I think they see a weakness in knowing how young Father Ryan's linebacking core is. Spread them out. Make them tackle in space. By and large, with the exception of a couple of long, broken runs, Father Ryan's run defense has been very stout tonight. More so than we've seen in, in previous weeks. Second and 11 now after the four-yard gain by Ensworth. Ken in a quick throw over the middle. It's caught in traffic. Dante Wynn brings it in. That's another first down for Ensworth. We saw that play work for Father Ryan earlier down the seam in that same spot. This time it works for Ensworth, unfortunately. The ball will be spotted at the Father Ryan 18-yard line, we'll say. First and 10 for Ensworth. The clock runs. 8.24 to go fourth quarter. Ensworth leads by 11. Father Ryan cannot afford to give up a touchdown here. It would be really tough to come down by three scores. It was McDaniel slicing through. Stop him at about the five-yard line. It was Hubbock on the stop. And so Torrey Heron comes into the game, big number 55. The 5'8", 262-pound freshman. Try and plug up some holes there in the middle as Zach Smith comes to the sideline. Approaching the eight-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Ensworth leads 21-10. Father Ryan trying to get a defensive stop here. And so with McDaniel moved over to the left of Kennan. Be a handoff to McDaniel. He's trying to get to that far corner. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Ensworth. And that's going to be a penalty at the end of the play. It just an un, it is, It's going to be on Father Ryan. It's going to be unnecessary roughness after the play. And that penalty would be assessed on the kickoff. It's not. That's not the official ruling, but after the play, I can't get a number um, on who did it. I think it might have been. I'm not really sure. It was far on the far side around the 10-yard line where it was marked. Well, the head referee is the one that flew through the flag, so it should be fairly easy to figure it out. Once he explains it to us. Yeah, after illegal shift on Ensworth? Personal it was, it was offsetting. So they're going to have to replay the whole thing. 
So Father Ryan really shooting themselves in the foot there. That touchdown would have come back. Either way, it should come back, uh, offsetting penalties. But there was an illegal shift by Ensworth, and then after the play, there was just some unnecessary roughness. Hmm. So Father Ryan giving a second chance here in the red zone. I guess there's no five versus 15 penalty. Many years ago in the pro level, they made it where those five-yard penalties go away if there's a personal foul. But in this case, not so on the high school level. But on the first play after that, it's going to be a carry into the end zone. Touchdown, Ensworth. Tulio Malone. Not much there for Father Ryan on the run on the run defense right there. Just not really in action. Ensworth takes a three possession lead going up 27 to 10. Seven minutes, 37 seconds to go, fourth quarter. No, wait, was there a penalty against Father Ryan afterward? I was looking down at some notes and I looked up to see the head referee signaling. I'm, just because where we are, I'm really having some trouble seeing too, and uh, I'm kind of, you know, over here. Well, they just said on the PA announcement, said face mask Father Ryan. So that will be enforced on the kickoff. Father Ryan, they played really good penalty-wise. They were together in the first half. The second half, starting to look a little sloppy. Malone so tough to tackle, even a face mask can't bring him down. Jackson with the extra point is good. 7.37 to go fourth quarter. Ensworth now leads Father Ryan 28-10. And we have some scores. We can have some updates from other scores of interest. Yeah, so around your interest, the biggest interest right now in the fourth quarter down in Williamson County, we've been bringing this Brentwood trying to make a comeback but still trading, uh, trailing Independence 42-31 to 31 in the fourth. Wow. Down in Chattanooga in the fourth quarter. 34-3, McCauley over JP2. And finally, another final out of Chattanooga. Brentwood Academy going down and beating Baylor 35-7. No update from NBA yet, but as far as we know, it's 28 to nothing on West End. Yeah, for NBA taking on a 3-3 three three White Station team. The odds were not in White Station's favor going into that one. So seven minutes and 37 seconds to go, fourth quarter. Ensworth 28, Father Ryan 10. In a game where Father Ryan in the third quarter took a 10-7 lead on a field goal. But ever since then, Ensworth, they've made a couple of very good throws, very accurate and some tough catches. Give them credit for that. Also worked a couple of long runs. And for as valiantly as Father Ryan fought to contain the run, and for whatever reason, Ensworth seemed to get away from it. I'm not complaining, mind you, but so now it's going to be another player coming in to try things off with a kickoff. This is Evan Cooley, a left-footed kicker, spinning toward that far side, fielded to the 23. Trying to run back with it is Antonio Wright, but he's going to be stopped. So Father Ryan... Trailing 28 to 10 in the fourth quarter, 7:24 to go. The Irish are going to get back into this one. They need to start it right now. Next week, Father Ryan at Brentwood High School. The second of a home and home series. Brentwood won here at Father Ryan last season. So here we go for Father Ryan from the far hash on his own 20-yard line. Trailing by 18 points in the fourth quarter. Flag comes in as Ensworth's player didn't get off the field quickly enough. Josh Howard got caught out there. Or is this a substitution penalty? So Ensworth gets pinched for a five-yard penalty on the illegal substitution. Cal Archdeacon. Tried to exit the game, one of their defensive linemen for Ensworth. The official said that was a violation of the rules. Those will be first and five for Father Ryan. 7.23 to go fourth quarter. And the Irish trailing by 18 points. They're going to run it on first and 10. And there isn't any room there at all on the run for Ford. So it'll be a two-yard loss for Ford. First and five turns into second and seven. The clock continues to run, approaching the seven-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Innsworth 28, Father Ryan 10. Three receivers, two to the near side, 
An H back on the near side for Tapscott. It's going to roll to the near side as the receiver gets open for a minute. It's incomplete. Intended for Seamus O'Connell. Dante Wynn in the area. Ditto for Jude Malloy. So Haley will come to the sideline. Erdman in for him as the Irish go with it will almost certainly be a four-receiver look. Also, Michael Linehan into the game. Third down and seven. The Irish have to get the ball right to their 30-yard line to get a first down. Throw to that far side. Receiver falls down. It's incomplete. Intended for David Ward. Ward just slipped, it appears. No penalty. And it's going to be a punt for Father Ryan down by 18 points at the 641 mark of the fourth quarter. But again, Father Ryan next week at Brentwood in two weeks. It'll be an off week, a bye week, a Friday night free. Week after that, at Baylor down in Chattanooga before Father Ryan hosts McCauley to end the regular season as Innsworth brings pressure on Wesnowski. Sky punt goes past the 50, take a nice Irish bounce. A good 15 yards and still rolling. Finally, it'd be blown dead at the Innsworth 27-yard line. So for all the pressure that Innsworth brought on that play, Father Ryan got the punt away. Good job by Wisnowski having that a mental fortitude. But Father Ryan, down by three scores, sees Innsworth get the ball at the 626 mark of the fourth quarter. And basically, really, with F. Innsworth getting four or five yards of play right now, they keep that up. They can virtually drain this clock. Cole Kennan remains in the game at quarterback. We go four wide receivers. Irish still have eight in the box, but a pump fake and a throw, and it's incomplete. Intended for Isaiah Horton on the near side, and once again, James Reed the third, the freshman corner who has not played much at all this season. And there for the stop. Yeah, Father Ryan really. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm. A, I'm a little stuttering here. I was just a little caught off guard that Ensworth is electing to throw the ball up three. You know, up three. Up three scores now with a really good opportunity to just run out the clock. They've got the full distance of the field. They're not really struggling to run the ball. It's just it's catching me off guard. But it does stop the clock. You're right. Six eighteen to go. Fourth quarter. This one's gonna be a run up the middle. Irish are ready for it. So it's Malone on the carry. Three-yard gain. Third and seven. Six minutes to go, fourth quarter. Father Ryan really needs to stop here if they have any chance at all getting back into this one. 18 seconds on the play clock, and Ensworth seems more than content to allow that play clock to run down as much as they can. Ten seconds in the play clock, 5.40 to go in the game. Third and seven. It's a three-receiver look. You figure Ensworth's going to run here, but instead lining up the pass. Kennan throws deep, very high throw. Falls incomplete, stops the clock, 5.28 to go fourth quarter. You know, like I said, I'm still really shocked that they elected to throw the ball twice in this series because now you've stopped the clock. You've got – Father Ryan now has life. They've got five and a half minutes to score three touchdowns. It's very doable. Intended receiver, Jude Malloy, and the senior Hunter Hopkins with him there defensively. So Ensworth not letting off the gas, and in this case leaving some time on the clock. So Jackson gets the punt away. Urban feels it at the 37. Fair catch called for and made. So that's where Father Ryan will begin its next offensive possession. Five minutes, 20 seconds to go fourth quarter. Father Ryan needs three scores, or else Ensworth's going to claim yet another consecutive victory over the Irish. This smart play by Parker Erdman called the fair catch. Two Ensworth players were running with a full head of speed probably would have gotten knocked. Well, Erdman, for, especially for being only a sophomore, has shown very good field awareness and position awareness to make sure he doesn't pull it in and then just get waylaid. He's a very possession type player. If you give him the ball, he has a, always has a chance to make the play. That's why he's back there only as a sophomore, and that's why you've seen him as a slot receiver a lot. He's got great hands, and he's very quick. 
Four receivers for the Irish, three to the near side on this first and ten. Ball at the Father Ryan 37-yard line. 5.20 to go fourth quarter. Setting up the screen. It's incomplete. Intended for Antonio Wright. Yeah, it's hard to throw a screen pass when you have three defenders right up in your face jumping. Got to be careful there, too. You throw it just a little too low. It could be interception either from any of the linebackers coming up or right into the face of the defensive lineman. Tab Scott's not a short guy, 6'3", but he had 6'5", Tyler Barron getting right up there in his face. Makes it tough. Second and 10, 5'16 to go. And the Irish again with four receivers. Tab Scott looked to the near side. Now he's going to run far side, waiting to find somebody to get open. He's going to run with it. Spin move. How about a seven-yard gain for D.C. Tab Scott? And right there you just saw some of the poise that this young man has. Only a sophomore like we always constantly say because he just shows – so many glimpses of just a lot of potential. He felt the blindside pressure, and instead of taking a sack, was smart enough to get around and make a play. And he got out of bounds, too, as they've stopped the clock. 5.05 to go, fourth quarter. Third and four, the Irish need to reach, looks like their own 47-yard line. So Tab Scott's going to throw near side a double coverage intended for Seamus O'Connell. He nearly had a chance to bring it in, but he had Wynn right with him, holding his arm back after contact was made, so a clean play. Yeah, Wynn and Turntine were both there to make plays. Dangerous, though, but Sheamus did have a good chance of making it. He got his hand up. It was, was, was not able to get the second hand up. With Father Ryan down by 18 points, willing to be more risky with the throws. But on fourth and four, the Irish are going to have to go for it here. Ensworth only has three down linemen up, so unlikely they'll jump. Quick throw by Tabscott, incomplete intended for David Ward, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. So 4.53 to go fourth quarter. Ensworth's ball. Ensworth leads Father Ryan 28-10. to 10. And I can't imagine with under five minutes of they even go run the ball. Let's, let's get this over with at this point. I, I, I think it'd be – Kind of a low move to just start throwing the ball, trying to run up the scoreboard, but hey, wouldn't be uncommon. I'll reserve comment. <laughs> three go fourth quarter. Ensworth leads Father Ryan twenty-eight to ten. Funny you say that. I got I got more pressure on me here being with the being with the school. <laughs> this is gonna be a handoff, McDaniel. I, I say this not out of negativity of Ensworth, but for my passion for. Purple football. Well, I remember in 2011 when Ensworth had a pretty big lead here late, and they kept Corn Elder in the game. Had a long run. Oh, man. Got banged up a little bit. That's a name a, I haven't heard in a he quick was, minute. Yeah, I, he was un, until Ty Chandler. He was the best high school running back I'd ever seen in person. Second and six, 425 to go fourth quarter. Ensworth leading Father Ryan 28 to 10. And the ball in Father Ryan territory. I was here for that game in middle school. <laughs> well, maybe fourth, fifth grade, some, somewhere in that area. Uh, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, and I I remember them constantly saying the Corn Elder name, and oh man, he's an excellent running back in high school. Another excellent running back, Malone, Tulio Malone on that far side. They haven't used him that much in this game. Has Ensworth somewhat surprisingly, he's very effective. At least he has been averaging 6.8 yards per carry. He moves the chains there for the Tigers. 4:01 to go, fourth quarter. Father Ryan trailing 28 to 10. Not the ending that Father Ryan wanted that is unfortunately coming coming fast. Father Ryan doesn't look like they're in a hurry to stop the clock. We'll see if the coach director decides to use his timeouts here shortly. First and 10 from the Irish 21-yard line. It's going to be a run up the middle. McDaniel breaks a tackle. Takes a trio of Irish. Finally Hopkins in there to bring him down. McDaniel a little slow to get up. Hope he's okay. Three minutes, 27 seconds to go fourth quarter. And again, Father Ryan led 10-7 to seven midway through the third. Only to see Ensworth with a couple of quick strikes. Well, what we finally saw is we finally saw Ensworth really starting to get their run game together. And with a good mixture of pass, even, even with the mixture that we saw late when they started running the ball just a little bit more, was still more passing than we expected. But they've really got a rhythm going right now, the Tigers do, and it's working for them. They, they're they getting big plays in the secondary. And that's just the reality of it. That's 
and and watching as much video as I could possibly find from Innsworth, seeing uh, Kenan, the quarterback, I was expecting him to run it even more than he has tonight. You know, he is accurate when he throws the ball, at least from what I've seen. And like any high school quarterback, not every throw is perfect, but nonetheless, he's proven to be a, a rather capable quarterback. You look at the teams that beat Ensworth, CPA, a lot of it was just excellence of execution, very accurate throws. And even with that, Ensworth kept trying to fight back. 327 to go fourth quarter. Ensworth 28, Father Ryan 10 as they'll wind the clock with Ensworth looking at first and goal from the nine. And Gabriel McDaniel over on the sideline receiving attention. That brings Tulio Malone into the game. Malone, a sophomore, 5'9", 220 pounds. Modern day Maurice Jones Drew. So they're going to hand it to Malone. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Ensworth. And with the 2.59 to go, 34-10, to 10, this one is unfortunately all but over. Malone able to run that one in, just breaking tackles, and you can tell exhaustion is set in for this Father Ryan defense. Well, you know, they were able to hang in with them so much because the offense was making drives down the field, and Ensworth was helping them get into the red zone, but they couldn't capitalize in the red zone. They went into the red zone three times where they came up with nothing. I missed field goals and two times being knocked out of range for Zach Wesnowski. Division II AAA, you can't afford to make errors like that. Every time you get to the 25, you've got to score something, and the Irish came up short three times tonight, and potentially you get those scores. And, I mean, you score a touchdown every time you get into the red zone, which Father Ryan has been. It's not like these have been super long-distance field goals. I mean, you're looking at a 35-35 game. It could be if you score every time you get in the red zone, but Father Ryan has really struggled getting into the end zone, in the red zone. So less than three minutes to go when people look up the final score online or open the Tennessee tomorrow, however they find out their information. They may see a score, it's 35-10 to 10 Ensworth, but it certainly does not, not reflect what we've right. seen tonight. Not indicative of the game through two and a half quarters. But for this Ensworth team, you know, there's a reason they're about to move to 5-2 and two on the season. They've got a, a pretty talented squad. And the Irish, I'm looking at the most unfortunate turn of events, a fourth consecutive loss falling to 2-5 and five on the season and 0-4 and in Division II AAA play. And at this point, Father Ryan down by 25 points. It's a four-possession game, less than three minutes to go. So we're going to be Evan Cooley, backup kicker. That left leg kick toward the far side, fielded at the 21 to the 25. Spin move and then spun out of bounds around the 30-yard line. Michael Hart's on the return. So we'll see what Father Ryan does here, down by 25 points and less than three minutes to go in the game. But again, one week from tonight, be Father Ryan at Brentwood High, and we'll have that game for you here, ATW Sportscast and behind the crest. D.C. Tabscott remains in the game at quarterback for the Irish. The sophomore Tabscott with the freshman forward to his left at running back, four receivers, three to the near side. Tabscott, plenty of time with only three rushers. He's going to try to run with it. Careful, Tabscott, because he slides and some contact is made, not enough to get a penalty flag. I, I understand for a young quarterback in Tabscott, you want to get as many plays as you can as possible, especially, you know, the more snaps it takes, the better chance he has to eventually take the reins on his own and really kind of become like a field manager. But at the same time, you can't get hurt when you're losing by, by 25 points. Two minutes left. Incomplete pass. It was intended for Jaden John John Johnson there, but it's like a tongue tie as the ball was well into the ground before it reached the spot. But I have to concur. I mean, that's DC Taps guys. This team's starting quarterback, and in a game that is already out of hand, you do not want to see him injured, especially with your backup really being Seamus O'Connell, who is already, as we've seen, playing both sides of the ball of the ball as a receiver half the time and as a defensive back half the time. Third and five, Tabscott gets the first down. Knew the line he needed to reach just past the 40. Did a spin as he hit the ground, avoiding contact, many defenders. First down, Irish. 
And still yeah. going off of that, this is one of the times I'd like to see Tab Scott force a throw and stop running. It's the only time you'll ever hear me say that. Receiver screens some confusion. It goes to Johnson, number 17 with the catch, past the 45. Pinballs his way to the 47, maybe the 48. Some conf it looked like there were two receivers ready for that receiver screen, but Johnson, the closer of the two, snatched it out of the air. And Father Ryan's going quick back to the line. Four receivers again, two to either side. A minute 47 and counting. Second and four. Tab Scott throws to the far side, incomplete. Again, intended for Johnson. Tab Scott had protection. He was just off rhythm. He, right now you're seeing a lot of our some secondary, you know, second string receivers coming in. These are the guys you uh, don't it's practice as much with in practice. And so sometimes you don't see those rhythms. Plus it's to the far side of the field. Even college level quarterbacks have trouble making that down and out from that far away. So well, and Father Ryan uses an ensemble cast at receiver, but you're right, some of the younger players in there. Third and four. Tab Scott's gonna throw deep and it's intercepted. Flag, no, that was a ball being thrown on the side. Wishful thinking. I'm hearing yells from the other room about a sideline warning, so hold on on that. I think it was William Wright, typically a receiver. Need to have him my defensive side, number 86. The there's, a, uh, there's a flag on the play. Head referee is discussing it. See what happens here. It's against Ensworth, but they still get the injury. So I believe it is a sideline warning, the same penalty they gave to Father Ryan after they got an interception earlier in the game. Well, this is the second. They had a warning earlier for Ensworth, and then this is the second time. So the sideline warning is a five-yard penalty, but that's a post-possession after the interception by William Wright. So a minute 32 to go fourth quarter. You figure just a few more snaps here for Ensworth, and that's going to do it here at Giacosa Stadium. But for Father Ryan, the reality is that there are three games remaining in the regular season. Brentwood next week, Baylor at Baylor in three weeks, and the regular season finale here against Macaulay. But they're going to be in the playoffs no matter what, just like last year. Carry on first down for about six or seven yards. Will yeah, Garrett the, on the carry. The playoffs is something that's always intrigued me. Because I feel like, you know, especially you hear a lot about this all the time. We're in the generation of, oh, everyone's a winner. And so that's what it kind of seems like when they start doing this, that everyone makes the playoffs. But at the same time, it gives you a lot of extra football to watch. So it's a, it, it's it, the way you look at it. I mean, yes, everyone's a winner. Everyone gets a chance no matter how bad you are. But also you get a lot more football. Not necessarily the best, but still pretty good football. Second and five. Handoff. About a four-yard gain. And I definitely hear as far as the participation trophy or ribbon kind of thing, which absolutely can be disgusting when you think about what the competition of sports and the real lessons you're supposed to learn from it. However, on the flip side, it keeps hope alive for teams, knowing that no matter how bad things get, there is that chance. But playoff seeding is huge. If that means going to play in Memphis, like Christian Brothers. Yeah, because if you get the bottom seed, all of a sudden you're looking at three straight road games against really high seeds before you even get to go to Cookville. You're right, and that's and I mean if so. Anyway, it's not it. like I mean it's not like it's an easy hand in where it's easy, but at the same time, it's like well we can lose every game, but we can still win the state championship. Now to me, that's just sometimes doesn't sound that right. One more carry here for Ensworth as the clock hits zero, and that's going to do it. Ensworth moves to five and two on the season, two and one in Division Two AAA play for Father Ryan, a fall to two and five, and another loss in Division Two AAA play, zero and four for Father Ryan. So your final score, Father Ryan falling to Ensworth 35-10. to 10. Anything else, Owen? Hey, stay tuned to Behind the Crest this week. We have two broadcasts coming up. On Tuesday, we have girls soccer here at, at the G. And later in the week, on October 4th, we have senior night for volleyball. As the girls take on, the girls volleyball, they take on girls preparatory school from Chattanooga. Stay in for, stay tuned. Me and Austin will be to both. Live broadcast, thank you for tuning in tonight, and we hope that you'll come to Senior Night on both those nights. But if not, as always, please join us. Of course, it'll be Senior Night for Father Ryan's final home game, but that's several weeks from now against Macaulay. Once again, your final score, Ensworth 35, Father Ryan 10. For Owen Doherty, everybody with Behind the Crest and ATW Sportscast, I'm Lou Pickney saying so long from Giacosa Stadium.